Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if Naruto drops his mask in front of Konoha 12. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. Kakashi jumped from tree to tree, praying that he wouldn't be too late. The weird black clouds worried him a lot, like the strange energy that he had felt earlier. He just hoped that his students hadn't went overboard and used any lethal attacks. Not that Naruto would unless in a last case scenario, but the copy Nen sometimes wasn't so sure about Sasuke. Upon reaching, the valley of the end, Kakashi realized that there was, in fact, a god somewhere out there. As soon as he dropped next to the two unconscious boys, the rain stopped. He surveyed his surroundings, noting that the valley looked like a battlefield. A recently used one at that, there were large holes in the cliffs, water everywhere and it didn't seem it was there just because of the rain. He looked at the boys once again. Sasuke's cursed mark was slightly pulsating, indicating that it had been used soon. Other than that, his clothes were torn up and he had cuts and bruises all over his body. And a single scratch right across his forehead. Although his students weren't in any condition to be happy about, he smiled slightly under his mask. That Naruto. That day on the rooftop he hadn't arrived luckily on time, in fact, he had watched the whole fight up to the point when his male students had decided to use deadly attacks against each other with Sakura trying to stop them, coming in between. He had heard the whole conversation before and during the fight. Kakashi couldn't really blame Sakura for what she had done. He knew, although she tried to hide it, that she felt like a nuisance to the team, and that she was not going to let them die on her watch. However, two days ago she had become the Hokages of Priantis and, from what he had heard, she was showing a long hidden talent. He was really proud of her, although he had no reason to be, he had nothing to do with her current success. He knew that being a medical ninja would be best for her due to her perfect chakra control and already good first aid knowledge, and the alternative, being a genjutsu user, didn't look too bad either. He was sorry that he had focused so much on Sasuke and Naruto and not on her, even when he had his reasons. And her natural physical strength was something to be reckoned with, too. At times, he had felt sorry for Naruto. Speaking of whom, at first sight, was in more serious condition than Sasuke. He had a hole in his shirt, where he was probably pierced with the Chidori. However, Kakashi then noted that he didn't have any cuts or bruises like Sasuke and there wasn't a single mark on the shoulder where his clothes had torn. The Junin figured out that Naruto had used the Nine Tails' help for the fight, which led him to believe that Sasuke had somehow strengthened the mark's effects, after all, from the times he had seen him with using the power, he knew that the seal wouldn't help him much against Naruto, who used a demon. The copy Nen was sure of it. Without further ado, he lifted both of the boys on his shoulders, Sasuke on the right, Naruto on the left, and headed to Konoha, meeting with a medical team along the way. The medic Nens went with Kakashi at the hospital, where Sakura was waiting. She had a serious face on, but, once she looked at her teammates, her features softened. He heard her whisper to them, welcome home, as she went to do her duties. He might have seen her eyes watering, but he wasn't going to make a problem out of it. Somewhere in the back of his mind, just before he passed out due to the power created by the collision of the Chidori and the Rasengan, Sasuke thought that he was going to wake up greeted by a big headache. Surprisingly, he didn't. He woke up, feeling fine, albeit a bit dizzy. Morphin. Soon after the effects of the drug started to subside and Sasuke was once again able to think clearly. He looked around himself and found out that he was once again in the Konoha Hospital, a place with which he had become too familiar with lately. He started replaying his memories from the past few months, the Chunin exams, his fights with Naruto, Kakashi's words, Orochimaru's subordinate's words, the first and only time he met Orochimaru and the power of the newly second stage cursed mark and Sasuke realized how messed up his life had become, and how he wasn't exactly making it better. There was more than one reason why he had left, or tried to. Yes, revenge had played a big role, but there were other things. There was Naruto's growth and strength. He had managed to beat Gara, Kiba, Neji, beat that ninja from the rain country Aoi, the water guys that hadn't been bothering them since the Chunin exam, he managed to beat Sasuke himself. There was the look of admiration in Sakura's eyes the day he told her that Naruto had been the one who saved them from the sand. A look, which, for some reason, made him feel slightly annoyed. Then there were, of course, Itachi's words towards him. 
He was not interested in fighting him, he still thought that his little brother was weak. And he was after Sasuke's friend. Sasuke assumed that Naruto's strength came from the mysterious red chakra, but he knew it was more than that. Although he hadn't seen Naruto's fights during the Chunin exam, he had heard about them from his team enough to know what it was that made Naruto so strong. It was Naruto's determination to prove something. To Kiba, he had proved that he was not the academy's clown anymore, the boy that couldn't even do a henge properly. To Neji, he had proved that hard work can beat a genius, that he was not a dropout. But, to Gara, Aoi and the others, it was another thing. He wanted to protect them, Sasuke and Sakura, his teammates, his friends. Sasuke himself had managed to fight the pain from his cursed mark during the match between Naruto and Gara, the same pain that made him collapse during the second exam. As much as he'd wished to deny it, Itachi had been right, there wasn't a lot of hatred in his heart. In fact, ever since he had joined Team 7, the already present hatred had taken a back seat in his life. Between the missions and quarrels and annoyances, the Chunin exams and bone-chilling enemies, Sasuke had started to care for his team. It was something he had thought would never happen. After all, Sakura was still a weak and rather annoying fangirl, right? And Naruto was the loud-mouthed village idiot, nay? Wrong. Somewhere over the course of the last few months, they had become his trusted comrades, friends, even, if he ever had ones. Sakura had stopped being so shallow, and had let her natural intelligence shine through. As for Naruto, he had proven himself as a reliable fighter and trustworthy partner in a fight. So, was going to Orochimaru worth losing them? Sasuke was not, in fact, doubting the importance of avenging his family, he was merely reconsidering his methods. The Sanin was a reliable source of power, he did, after all, have a personal interest in seeing Sasuke grow to the best of his abilities. But then again, wasn't Kakashi the one who had taught him his strongest technique, who had trusted him enough to use it for good? Those who abandon their mission are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. The genin didn't know how much time he sat on the bed, completely still, looking at the wall opposite himself and just thinking. However much it was, he was interrupted when the door opened. It was Sakura. She smiled brightly and a little forcefully at the boy, closed the door and walked to the bed. Sasuke had expected her to start crying, to beg him for a chance, but she didn't. She just hugged him. It wasn't the desperate hug she had given him when he had first woken up in the hospital after he had met Itachi nor was it the fangirl, clinging, she sometimes did. It was a warm, nice hug. A friendly hug. A little bit tense, like her smile, but a friendly one nevertheless. Another realization hit him. Sakura didn't trust him. And how could she, when he was the one who left her on that stupid bench after muttering something suspiciously close to, thanks, but I'd rather not. Before Sasuke could react, the hug was over and she asked him, still smiling, how are you? I'm okay. He replied in an instant, though the look in her eyes told him that the answer was not, in fact, the correct one, but since when was there a correct one? Yeah, sure you are, she said, raising a skeptical eyebrow. Two broken ribs, a few pulled muscles, numerous cuts and bruises. As good as new. Oh, well, when she put it that way, wait, since when was Sakura sassy? Sasuke blinked, thinking it was due to the fact that he was not her favorite person at the moment and decided to reply in his usual cool voice. And how would you know that? I'm helping around. It's part of my training to become a medic nin under Tsunade-sama, she said, completely serious. The answer left him surprised, and he didn't bother to hide it. Surprised, and maybe slightly disbelieving. She noticed and laughed at his expression, yeah, yeah, I know. But it requires good chakra control and I'm improving quite rapidly. It's been almost two weeks and Tsunade-sama already lets me heal cuts, I can also provide first aid, she said proudly. Sasuke nodded, HN. After all, he was Sasuke Uchiha and he was not good at communication, so he made other people adapt themselves to having one-sided conversations. She rolled her eyes at his usual behavior, but grinned slightly. Oh, by the way, she added in an all-too-cheery tone, in case you are worried about your safety, don't be. There is an Anbu guarding your door. He cocked an eyebrow. And why would I be? Well, let's just say there are quite a few people out there that aren't exactly happy about the fact that you are back. Especially when Naruto and Kakashi have been pleading for all of your crimes to be lifted. 
Surprisingly, committing treason and nearly killing Kona his newly beloved blonde idiot can have some people pretty intent on beating you up. Sasuke shook his head slightly in amusement. Just before he could reply though, the door burst open and Naruto entered, and Bu yelling behind him. He just smiled and closed the door. Sasuke thought that he saw Kakashi's gray hair, but wasn't sure. The blonde boy turned towards the bed where his teammates were looking questioningly at him, but he shrugged the matter off putting his hands behind his neck in the usual laid-back position and glaring at the Uchiha. Teme, you look nice. Sasuke narrowed his eyes at him, but said nothing. Still, don't think you can go wander around on your own. There is an Anbu guarding you 24-7. If this Anbu can't even stop an idiot like you from entering, then I think that me wandering around would be much safer, thank you. Naruto dropped his glare after a couple of moments and started chuckling. Sakura followed after him, and Sasuke, for some reason, was on the verge of laughing himself. Things weren't supposed to be this easy, right? Not when he had betrayed them, nearly killed Naruto and humiliated Sakura. They were not supposed to be laughing like this, together, as if nothing had happened. It made everything all the more amusing, though. Again, when exactly had his life become so messed up? Then that's because, Naruto managed to say between laughing. He was almost rolling on the floor now. That's B because I am the best ninja ever. HN, Sasuke replied, but continued smirking, which looked suspiciously like smiling. Sakura was too busy giggling like mad to notice. After a minute or so, Naruto and Sakura both straightened up and informed Sasuke of what had happened to the other people on his retrieval mission. Some of them had had tougher fights than others, but ultimately they were all recovering just fine. He still wasn't sure whether it was a good thing that he was back or not but decided to appreciate the fact that they had basically put their lives on the line for him. In fact, Sasuke actually thought that what he was feeling was suspiciously close to guilt, and a small voice in his head that hadn't been completely corrupted by thoughts of revenge whispered that it was, and that he should be proud to be feeling this way, because there was still hope for himself. Naruto and Sakura both caught his sly smile, and smiled wider in return. And what of the sound for? The black-haired boy asked. Sound 5, Naruto corrected him. There was another member who arrived later. I fought him for bit. Then bushy eyebrows took him and it turned out Gara also helped. Choji took on the fat one, Neji, the creepy guy with a lot of arms, Kiba, the guy with two heads and Shikamaru, the girl that wouldn't stop cussing. HN, the Uchiha replied yet again. Secretly, though, he was impressed. Suddenly, Sakura smacked her forehead eyes wide as if she had just remembered something, and turned to the Uchiha. Sasuke, take your shirt off. I was supposed to have a look at you, but we got distracted. You've been out for about a week and the last time your bandages were changed was yesterday. Sasuke complied and looked at the bandages covering his chest. Sakura quickly stripped them off and examined his ribs, then the cuts and bruises. He took note both of how methodically she proceeded only healing one of the bigger cuts and carefully checking the others. He then concluded that Sakura definitely had potential, which, to be honest, wasn't all that surprising. After all, her excellent chakra control and observation skills had made themselves clear in the very beginning of the team. She finished, applied new bandages and he pulled his shirt back on. He was about to mutter a, thanks, when the Godem Hokage, who was probably the last person that wanted to see him at the moment, walked in. She didn't bother with the usual greetings and other formalities, and went straight on the offense. Uchiha Sasuke, you willingly left the village with Orochimaru's men, fully aware the consequences of your actions, she started, looking at him sternly. Yes, it was not a question, but hell, he thought it needed confirmation anyway. Tsunade nodded, as if expecting the reply, then continued, you also knew that the official punishment for treason is handling you like any other missing men, regardless of background. You were also aware that said punishment is death. Yes, I was fully aware. Tense silence filled the room. Sakura and Naruto had, on instinct, stepped between him and Tsunade. The Godem Hokage looked at the three genin with a glare that had sent other people of their very rank running for their lives. Naruto held her gaze, but there was a bead of sweat on his forehead, and Sakura gulped slightly, but didn't falter either. Tsunade continued staring at them but then noticed something flickering in Sasuke's eyes. It was only for a moment, but she could swear. Never mind, she thought. 
It just made her decision easier. Very well then, she stated, dropping her glare. Fortunately for you, since the village is still recovering from the invasion on the Chunin exams, I did not have enough time to declare you officially a missing nen. Therefore, I have no legal standing to treat you as such. That is the law. I cannot lift crimes that have never been stated officially. Naruto smiled, and Sakura couldn't hide her happiness either. Sasuke, however, knew not to push it and didn't change his expression. She was letting him off the hook, but why? Was there anything more? Plus, he was still going to receive some kind of punishment, he just knew it. However, ah, there it was. I cannot leave you wandering around unattended, seeing as you have to prove your loyalty. I will have two Jonin stationed at your house for the next three months or if I deem needed, more. Should you try to betray this village again, you will be declared missing Nin and will face the consequences. Meanwhile, you will be put under a test period, during which you will have the opportunity to prove your loyalty. Is that understood? He nodded, calmly accepting the situation. Yes, thank you, Hokage-sama. Tsunade smirked. It was the first time he had ever called her that. Also, he still didn't know what said test period involved. It was an idea that had occurred to her the week before, the night when he and Naruto were brought back by Kakashi. Things were going to get interesting. Sakura, what is his condition? Tsunade asked her a preantis. His cuts and bruises are mostly healed but I had to close one of them that had opened, the girl replied, putting a smile on her teacher's face. She really did have talent. Then, Uchiha, you may leave the hospital, but I want you all in the Hokage mansion in two hours, got it? Hi, they all confirmed and Sasuke and Sakura stood from the bed. The two of them briefly contemplated asking, but figured that if Tsunade wanted them to know why she would have told them. Naruto, for his part, was too excited to care. So, you want us all to be a team? Naruto questioned after Tsunade had finished her speech. The boy looked kind of confused, which might have been amusing had Tsunade not just finished a 30-minute lecture on why she thought that Team 7, Team 8, Team 10 and Team Guy would make a good battle unit. At least he was able to comprehend it, she thought a bit ticked off. Still, fitting all of her reasons in 30 minutes had taken a lot of speech planning on her side. She had explained that she knew that the rookie nine were all nominated for the Chunin exam and they had all passed the first and second exam. Same went for Team Guy. Their fights in the exam had been pretty though from what she had heard, but, nevertheless, the ones that had passed had done brilliantly. Then there were their fights during the third exam matches. Then there were their talents. Hayuga Neji was his clan's genius, but, from what she had heard from Kuranai, Hinata was starting to improve. Tenten was a weapons master, something uncommon for those times. Lee was a taijutsu master, which also wasn't that common. The Ino Shika Cho formation had been established by Team Ten's great ancestors and their children had their abilities. Ino was good with mind techniques. Shikamaru. With shadow ones, also had the intellect of Nara clansmen. And Choji. With body extension. The original Ino Shika Cho formation had always been exceptionally strong but Tsunade thought that the new one would prove to be even stronger. Team 8 were good in tracking, Shino with his insects, Hinata with her Baikugan and Kiba with Akamaru. They could all use their abilities pretty well. If Team Guy was the oddest one, Team 10, the one with the best teamwork and Team 8, the one good at tracking, then Team 7 was the golden trio. Sakura, despite not being from a clan, was really smart, sometimes rivaling the Nara prodigy, as much as one can, of course. She was good at chakra control and genjutsu and was going to become an exceptional medic. Tsunade was sure of it. Also, her natural strength was something to be reckoned with. Sasuke was from the Uchiha clan, the once most noble clan in Konoha and had natural talent, strength, speed and, of course, the Sharingan. Now, he had the Chidori and training with Kakashi was starting to pay off. Although he had the cursed mark, which was proven to be unstable at times, it was possible to learn to control it even without Orochimaru's help. It could be of great use. And then there was Naruto. Tsunade was sure that there were things the genin in the room and Shikamaru, possibly, you could never be too sure with a Nara, didn't know, about the red chakra which he had used in his match against Neji and, apparently, against Sasuke the week before. About all the pain and sadness that his past hid but there were things that even Naruto himself didn't know. He didn't know why he was able to master the Rasengan, why he had more stamina and chakra than most shinobi, 
why he had managed to read a scroll that only Junin could read and master a technique from it in less than a night, then use it. The caged bunch and ninjutsu. He didn't fully realize what influence, in a good way, he had on the people he met, how he changed their lives. Heck, he even managed to get Zabuza, one of the seven swordsmen of the mist, to cry and confess his deep care for his partner and friend Haku. A man that was rumored to be a demon, one who killed 100 people in one night. He had even managed to change Tsunade's own mind, which not many, if any, could say to have done. He had also convinced Sabaku Nogara, after fighting him and winning, that he had a wrong perspective. That had won Konoha a valuable ally. He probably didn't know that he had a bridge named after him, the Great Naruto Bridge, finished after Team 7's mission in Wave Country. He didn't know, yet, and how did Tsunade know? Well, the Hokage had her ways. One of the things he also didn't know was why he, of all people, had the nine tails inside of him. Why his parents had died. But, soon enough, he would know. And when he realized all of these things, he would know that he was worthy of being a Hokage. A thing which Tsunade herself believed. Of course, he still had a lot to learn. Yes, Naruto, a team, she replied, then turned to the rest. What do you think? The shinobi exchanged glances. They all thought about what Tsunade had said. And, although they had some issues in their relationships with each other, they all came to the same conclusion. They could make it work. So, when Naruto replied for all of them, no one said a word. We'll do it. Tsunade smiled, pleased with the young shinobi's determination. Good. I appoint this as your meeting room. You all have to gather here at least once a week every Friday, and report about missions, training, and such. Now, I will give you your first mission. Isn't it a bit too early for that kind of thing? Shikamaru interrupted. After all, we have to first clear our relationships from any issues. He looked at Naruto, who always managed to get in a fight with one of the others, except Hinata, but there was a pretty obvious reason for that. Although he was a good person and loyal friend, his childish attitude was sometimes too troublesome to handle. That's exactly what this task is about, the Hokage replied, getting odd looks. It's to help you to become closer. So, without further ado, the first mission of the Konoha 12 will be. She paused, to have a sleepover. What? Both the boys and girls yelled, some demanding an explanation, the majority confused, with the exceptions of Neji, Shino and Sasuke. Because, for some people, image was everything. Listen, to become closer as a team, you need to get to know each other. The fastest way is to spend time together, and a sleepover opens up a lot of opportunities. Even so, how should we do that? Tenton asked, a puzzled look on her face. Where do we sleep? You can sleep at my place, Sasuke replied nonchalantly, surprising everyone. He wasn't stupid, he knew what he was getting himself into, but he owed the Hokage, and the others, for that matter, that much. Just be careful not to break anything. Don't worry Teme, we won't. Dobi, having you in there is precisely the reason I'm worried. Why you? Enough. Tsunade interrupted the growling Naruto. Now go, all of you, pack your stuff and have a nice time. And remember, this mission is for you to get closer, so play games, talk, share, or whatever the hell kids do these days, but clear any issues you might have, understood? Hi, and with that, the newly formed team left to prepare themselves for what they all knew would be a long night. They all met 30 minutes later in front of the Uchiha compound, Naruto being the last to arrive. He apologized, saying that he had had work to do at home, but Sakura still smacked him lightly, more out of habit and maybe a bit of playfulness than with an intention to hurt him. While Sasuke watched his two teammates interact, he noted Sakura's changed behavior towards Naruto and stared wondering when had they both changed so much, especially Sakura. Somewhere in the back of his mind he thought that maybe there had been some use in leaving for Orochimaru if it resulted in her growing up some more. Although, her lack of trust in him was worrying, he had to admit. Sasuke led the way through the huge compound. After the massacre he was offered a place to stay in Konoha, and so he hadn't stepped in his old home in years. However, they were currently walking towards not the Grand Uchiha mansion, but to another house on the edge of the compound. As the sole survivor of the clan everything was presumably his, but he did not want to go into his old home, not yet at least. He was told that everything was clean, but he did not want to reminisce that night again. He had chosen for them to stay in a mansion that was big enough, but had not been inhabited at the time of the massacre, meaning that it was not blood-stained. 
Throughout the whole walk everyone had grown silent, and he could feel two steady pairs of eyes on his back. He didn't have to turn around to know who it was. When Sasuke had first visited the mansion that afternoon, it had been, of course, quite run down. Luckily for him, he didn't have to clean the whole building by himself, as Kakashi decided to pitch in and had even got the two other janin, who were assigned to supervise Sasuke, to lend a hand. It was, by no means, in an ideal condition, but it was habitual enough. Needless to say, the two janin were currently outside, getting ready for a long night. The twelve shinobi inside decided to eat dinner first, since it was nearly seven o'clock, then, start the party, as Ino had put it, after that. Naruto, luckily, didn't complain about the lack of ramen and accepted a slice of the three large pizzas Kiba had brought. Choji had got himself enough food for an entire army, and even shared the desserts with the others. They ate mostly in silence, except when Naruto accidentally pushed Kiba's plate, who then punched him. They fought a little before Sasuke, Neji and Lee restrained them. After the small commotion, everybody continued eating. Tenten, Ino and Sakura shook their heads at the boys briefly, exasperated, but said nothing. When they were finished and the dishes were cleaned, Hinata and Tenten had volunteered to do them while Choji and Sasuke threw the garbage outside. They started brainstorming on what to do. Ino clapped, signaling that she had an idea, of which Shikamaru and Choji were rightfully suspicious. Let's play, truth or dare, or, never have I ever, she suggested in a chirp voice. These games are the funniest and quickest way to find more about each other. Also the most humiliating, Shikamaru muttered. What, would you prefer 20 questions? Shikamaru shuddered and Ino smirked triumphantly. Okay, let's play, but which one? Tenten asked, sitting in the circle the twelve had formed on the floor. I don't know, let's vote. Who wants to play, truth or dare? Ino, Kiba, Lee, Naruto and Hinata raised their hands. And who wants to play, never have I ever, the other seven hands flew up in the air, deciding the issue. Okay, so the rules are that someone says something that they have never done. If someone else has done it, they should raise their hand. Normally this is a drinking game, because the more you drink, the less possible it is for you to cheat. You cheat when you lie that you have never done anything or when you don't raise your hand. Fortunately, since we are shinobi, we are technically of legal drinking age. Unfortunately, if our senseis found us drinking, things will probably get bad, so not a word of this to anyone, okay. Also, I couldn't bring that a much, so we're only going to have to drink only half a can per round, Ino explained as she pulled out a plastic bag full of cans from her sack. Then, she proceeded to convince the more reluctant members of the group, aka Neji, to take part. Finally, he sighed, saying that it was stupid, but agreeing to participate nevertheless. Ino showed them the beverage for the night. Really, Ino? Chuhai? Shut up, Kiba. Now, who wants to be first? I do, I do. Naruto, you don't have to scream like that. Sorry, Sakura-chan. They all sat in the circle and the game began. Naruto grinned evilly as he thought of the perfect thing. Never have I ever. He paused for dramatic effect, had a crush on Sasuke. At this point, all the girls in the room, except Hinata, raised their hands. For some reason, Neji didn't like the fact that Tenten was one of those who raised their hands. She had never shown any sign of affection towards the Uchiha, unlike Sakura, who was blushing, and Ino, who was glaring at Naruto. Maybe she had just thought of him as cute, he mused, a bit displeased with the conclusion. Sakura, Ino and Tenten each drank half a can. Next to Naruto was Hinata, who looked around, trying to think of something. Then, she got it. Never have I ever gone on a mission outside the fire country. At that point, the whole team seven raised their hands. The others looked at them with questioning looks and they told them about their mission in the wave country, about Zabuza and Haku, about Gatu and the villagers. They told them about how Sakura managed to master climbing trees with only her feet at first attempt, she smiled proudly, and how Sasuke and Naruto had to practice a whole week in order to do it. They talked and Sasuke and Naruto got into a fight about who had been better at that. Sakura rolled her eyes at them and got them both cans after finishing hers. The others noticed the change in the teammates' behavior. Sakura didn't seem like a Sasuke fangirl anymore, she didn't praise him and call out randomly how awesome he was like she had used to. And although that they were fighting, Sasuke and Naruto had slight smirks on their faces, a sign that they were actually enjoying teasing each other. 
The other teams watched and decided that Sasuke's leaving was what had changed their relationship. Eventually, the story finished. The two boys stopped fighting and the game continued. Team Guy told the brief story of the one time they had gone all around the nations around the fire country to search for the third's favorite brand of tobacco. Neji and Tenton drank their deal, but since Lee couldn't drink, if they wanted to survive the night, he got a point written down on a napkin provided by Shino. Lee swore to never lie during the game, though the others never doubted that he would. Never have I ever hugged my crush, it was Eno's turn then. Sakura raised her hand and popped open another can. Surprisingly, Tenten also shot up her hand, raising a few eyebrows. She just smirked and said that it was another story for another day, also opening a new can. Sakura muttered, annoyed at the unfairness of the situation, since she had to spill. Next was Neji. Never have I ever kept an important secret to myself, he said, looking at one person in particular. The room suddenly became extremely silent. Then, slowly, Shikamaru grabbed a can and drank half of it, while Naruto finished his, face unusually grim. Naruto-kun, Shikamaru-kun, you don't have to tell us I if you're not comfortable shish sharing. Hinata looked around and everyone nodded. Although Neji had hoped to finally learn what the mysterious red chakra was, he decided not to push it, and instead show support. Actually, Shikamaru started slowly, Naruto, can we talk in private for a moment? The blonde nodded and the two boys left the room. Ten minutes later, they were back, with Naruto deep in thought. It was Choji's turn. He seemed to be contemplating something for a moment, but then he looked up from his lap, a determined look in his eyes. Never have I ever tried to change myself for somebody else. Ino, Sakura and, surprisingly, Sasuke, raised their hands and took a big gulp, not saying a word. Ino didn't need to. They had all heard her motto. Guys like slim girls which indicated that she wasn't as confident in her looks as she would like to be. Sakura, the one who had, at some point, taken after her, also didn't need to explain. Sasuke, though, came as a surprise, taking in the fact that the Uchiha's aloof demeanor didn't normally scream, insecure, and nobody in the room could see why he would be. After a minute of stunned silence, he sighed and quickly muttered something about Itachi and his father comparing one to the other. The rest of the group understood and did not question further. Next was Tenten, who cleared her throat, a somewhat devious smirk on her face. Never have I ever fallen for someone completely oblivious. Hinata reluctantly raised her hand, blushing. Everyone knew who that someone was except Naruto, but, seeing Hinata's blush, he decided that he shouldn't pester her. The Hyuga girl silently took a sip. However, one more person raised their hand. Everyone's jaws dropped. Shino. Kiba stuttered out. The normally cool Aburame got his can, drank half of it, then suddenly got flustered. You see, he fidgeted, which only caused more eyes to twitch. Ayame san never really noticed me. You like the Yame ne? Naruto managed to utter before falling dramatically to the ground and passing out. Hell was freezing over, they were all convinced. Anyway, Shino started, fixing his glasses on the bridge of his nose while regaining composure. It's a thing of the past now. Who's next? Everyone decided to just shake off the thought for the moment and resume the game. Sakura shook Naruto up and he grunted before sitting up in the circle. Then it was Sasuke's turn. He smirked, knowing exactly what to say. Never have I ever hugged one of my teammates. Naruto shoot him a glare while Sakura just took two cans, blushing. The way things were going she was about to lose. She was already feeling dizzy and trying her best to keep a stupid smile off her face. She had to think of something and fast. Meanwhile, Naruto was grudgingly taking a swig and Ino had gotten a can for everyone in her team. They had been childhood friends, after all. Kiba handed Hinata one and drank himself, while Tenten casually finished her can and Lee wrote down another point for himself. It was Shino's turn. Never have I ever fallen for somebody in this room. Everything was still for a moment. Then, collectively, everybody else besides Sasuke, Choji and Shino took a drink. The room was silent, since nobody really wanted to spill, not that some had to. Shikamaru was next. Never have I ever had a pet. At that point, Kiba, Shino, who didn't argue over the fact that bugs were pets, and Ino, a goldfish, raised their hands. Next was Lee. Never have I ever skipped a day of training. Collectively, the bigger part of the room groaned and everyone except Lee, Naruto, and Sasuke took a drink. After that, it was finally Sakura's turn. 
She had the perfect idea, or so she hoped in her already drunken mind. Never have I ever been publicly embarrassed by myself or anyone else in public. Naruto and Sasuke both raised their hands, the latter glaring at the medic in training, who just smiled sweetly in return. Hinata silently finished her drink, while Tenten sent her a meaningful glance as she took hers. Actually, everybody except Sakura, Lee, Tenten, and Shikamaru took one. They all looked at each other in surprise. What? You didn't all think that all, the big clans in Konoha were pranked in the same week just like that, did ya? Naruto slurred slightly, smirked devilishly. If the others weren't so drunk, they would have already been planning his death. Seriously? Even the Hyuga clan? How in the living hell did he manage to do that? Kiba replied, astounded. Oh, that? The compound is a Byakugan free zone cause of privacy, Naruto said, smiling at Neji sweetly. The older shinobi just twitched rather violently, saying nothing. Okay, but the Uchiha? Naruto glanced at Sasuke, who seemed to be having a moment of dawning realization and the beginning of a shock at the same time. Pink. Pink everywhere. Was the only thing he uttered. It was Kiba's turn and he had to think carefully. Not that he really could. The damn Chohai had gotten to him. Eventually, he decided. Never have I ever been scared by a horror movie. All of the others, except Shikamaru, who thought that horror were too troublesome and furthermore had never seen one, raised their hands and got the last cans. And the winner is. Ino waited until everyone's attention was focused on her, Shikamaru. Shikamaru was congratulated by everyone, who were all in various degrees of stoning. He had drunk only half a can and was, furthermore, the most sober person in the room, with Sakura the most drunk. To top it all off, it was only 8.30, which meant that Ino was not going to leave them alone. Shikamaru sighed as the next game started, truth or dare. It was going to be a long night. Shikamaru was first, because he had won the previous game. He sighed. Of course, the only Chunin in the group knew why Ino had chosen these precise games. The thing that the whole village called, the Nara clan's genius was, truthfully, mostly simple observation skills. And Shikamaru had very good ones. That was why he was the only one who noticed the look on Ino's face when she suggested those two games. The same look she got when she would repeat her mantra. Guys like slim girls, over and over and over again. The same look she got when she would rant on for hours about how she was sure that Sasuke loved her. Ino was playing matchmaker. She wasn't helping herself, but, quite obviously, her best friend, Haruno Sakura and, maybe, Tenten and Hayuga Hinata. And, being the good observer he was, Shikamaru knew exactly why. From his point of view, if people just paid more attention to things then they would all lead a happier life. But no, they just had to make things so troublesome. It didn't take a genius to catch the newfound curious look in Sasuke's eyes every time he looked at Sakura. The Uchiha hid his emotions well, but Shikamaru was no fool. Nor was he a romantic expert, but he had a feeling that the drama between the two teammates would be resolved with a happy ending, because even though Sakura didn't seem so trustful of the young prodigy now, she definitely still had feelings for him. Naruto was still an oblivious idiot when it came to Hinata's feelings for him. He just wouldn't finally look at her and notice the way she would look at him with admiration, the way she always blushed around him, how she stuttered. However, the fact that he obviously didn't like Sakura the way he did before, there weren't any pitiful attempts to flirt and ask for dates, was probably a good sign. Shikamaru signed it off to him realizing it was not worth it chasing somebody who was obviously not interested. That would normally be in conflict with his, never give up, personality, but there really was no battle to win, since it was a lost cause. Kiba had been eyeing Ino with interest for quite some time now. He probably just found her interesting, but Shikamaru knew that that would soon change. He had once fallen for his blonde teammate, he had to admit, but that was long ago. Now, she was more like an annoying twin sister than anything. Neji had also given Tenten a weird look when she had admitted to liking Sasuke. They were both training partners, but, by the way they were glancing at one another all throughout the game, the Chunin could tell that there was something more. Lee had had a crush on Sakura, but it wasn't serious, just a sort of slight obsession. Although he did look and act a bit weird, he was loyal and a good friend, so he would most likely find a girl too. Choji and Shino hadn't shown interest for anyone in particular for now, but they surely wouldn't stay single for long, after all.
They were both from famous clans and were good guys when you got to know them. Ayame would probably regret missing her chance. Then there was Shikamaru himself. He sighed again, remembering her smile and mock towards him. Relationships were just so troublesome. But, somehow, he knew, looking around the room, that they could also prove to be very uniting. And so, he decided to help Ino. They had all agreed that they wouldn't ask the people from their team. They all knew their teammates pretty well. So, he set eyes on his first target. Sasuke. He was aware of the Uchiha's cleverness and took measures for it. I suppose you are all wondering why you are here, Tsunade stated. The four Junin senseis of the new team they didn't know about nodded. Even Kakashi closed his book. He had a weird feeling about this. Earlier today a new team was formed. Now, that was interesting. It was rare for the Hokage to create new teams. The Anbu was one of the few, but it was more like a military division. Still, they didn't know what it had to do with them. This team was called the Konohad 12 and it's up to you to guess who are the members, the Godem continued. The Junin looked at each other, surprised. Now that was really interesting, albeit slightly worrying. Their Genin? In a team? They knew that they had some issues with their relationships. Like the fact that Team Guy didn't know the others all too well. Naruto's ability to piss off seemingly everyone, except Hinata. Or cheer seemingly everyone, especially Hinata. But it wasn't that which worried the senseis, it was their training. It was true that almost everyone in the Twelve were prodigies, except Sakura, Lee and Tenten, and had their own clan techniques and, although they elected them for the Chunin exams, their teachers couldn't teach them much. They entered because the Junin all believed in teamwork, and, by the looks of it, that was what had helped them during the exam, not proper training. They were all feeling guilty, except Guy, who had purposefully given his team time to prepare and hadn't rushed. Kakashi knew that he couldn't do much, it was his first time leading a genin team and he didn't know how to teach them, they were just too different. Naruto was a loud and hyperactive child, Sakura, a fangirl and Sasuke, an emo. The only one he could really teach because he could relate to him was Sasuke, but he couldn't just ignore the others. So, he spent months thinking about how he could make them improve, sadly with no success. So, he tried to get them to work together. Asuma didn't know anything about the Ino Shikacho formation. He wasn't from either of those clans. He, like Kakashi, didn't know how to help them. Ino was a fangirl. Shikamaru had absolutely no motivation and Choji was the obedient one, but he lacked physical ability. Although the Serutobi clan had a history of training the Ino Shikamaru Cho formation, Asuma doubted that all of his ancestors had to deal with the same thing like him. Again, he didn't know what to do and tried to focus on their teamwork. Kuranai was a rookie sensei, again, no experience. She couldn't help the three prodigies in her clan in any way. She noticed that they best improved by training each other, she had little to do with Hinata's improvement. Plus, her speciality was genjutsu and none of them had the amount chakra control needed. She emphasized on teamwork like the others. Looking at his fellow Junin, Guy realized that he had it easy. Neji was the genius of his clan that could train by himself, Tenten gladly helped him, improving her skills and Lee was his personal appreciations. He still felt guilty, because he couldn't teach the others anything new. He again put teamwork, and youthful exercises, above everything else. The Junin looked at the Hokage expectantly, waiting to be scolded at. Instead, they were greeted by a smirk, which confused them. Why are you so downcast? You think that you gave them bad training, right? she said. They all nodded and bowed their heads in shame. You do know why Konoha is one of the most powerful villages, right? She asked them, but didn't wait for a reply, it's because we rely mainly on teamwork. It isn't your fault that you couldn't give most of the training they needed, but you did give them the most important one. Did you notice how they changed after the invasion, after Sasuke's retrieval mission? Because I did, they are already forming bonds. At this moment, they are probably laughing their asses off at Naruto or playing some stupid game. A team is designed, so that each of the members could cover for the other's weaknesses. For example, Lee can't use Chakra, right? No problem, a few strikes from Neji and the opponent won't be bothering them. Or how they both are short-range fighters, depending on the technique and weapon she uses, Tenten could fight in all ranges. Now, I didn't summon you here to scold you. I summoned you so that we can make them an effective training program, before you head out for your next mission, which starts in a few hours. 
You know your students' weaknesses and strengths, you know where they can improve. Let's make a training program at which they can help each other. The goddamn finished her speech, leaving them silent. Two minutes later, they were already working on the schedule. Sasuke, truth or dare? The black haired boy wasn't that surprised, after all, he was never close with Shikamaru. He decided that the Nara clansman was just fulfilling their mission and decided to play easy. His head was buzzing lightly. Truth, Teme, did you get scared all of a sudden? Naruto, of course. No, Dobi, we have to get to know each other, remember? If you say so. Okay, Sasuke, Shikamaru decided to end the argument then, because he didn't want to deal with a headache later. How would you describe the personality of a potential girlfriend? Sasuke was stunned, but he didn't show it, of course, and started thinking of how to reply. He had, of course, considered the topic before. After all, his second goal, after killing Itachi, was resurrecting his clan. His priorities since back then hadn't really changed. He needed someone who could stand on equal ground with him, a warrior, but a lover. Someone who would love him and his kids regardless of how they turned out, because he knew, of personal experience, that the worst thing for a child was to feel, and be, underappreciated by his parents. Overall, he needed someone kind, but strong. However, he found himself adding a few new things to the list. He needed someone who could stop him from making mistakes or giving his judgment too quickly. Someone who would oppose them when they thought he was wrong, not be meek and obey everything he said without a second thought. But, at the end of the day, that someone had to love him the way he is, just like his children. He had to trust them with his life even. Sasuke realized that there were probably quite a few people in Konoha that could match up to those criteria, even with the large number of fangirls. However, he found himself leaning to one person in particular. He then realized where his thoughts had taken him. Shit, had he, did he, he decided not to go there, at least for the time being. He was going to later revisit those thought and judge their authenticity. Someone I trust, he soon found himself replying, both with my life and those of my children. Shikamaru decided not to comment on the vague answer, and instead let the Uchiha take his turn. Shino, truth or dare? Truth, Shino replied. He didn't like it when people asked him personal questions, but, for the sake of the mission, he was going to let this one pass. Explain how you control the insects in your body in a way that would make even Naruto understand. Sasuke smirked a little bit. Now that was going to be fun. Oi, Teme, what are you implying? That you're an idiot, obviously. The two boys had a glaring contest which ended when Sakura pushed them both in their seats. In the next half an hour Shino explained as best as he could how he controlled the bugs and, eventually, even Naruto got it. Then, it was the Abarame's turn. Naruto, truth or dare? Dare, I dare you to pick one girl in this room as a potential girlfriend, that was a smart move on Shino's part. Naruto was so dense about Hinata's feelings that, whatever he replied, it would be best for the Hyuga to know whether or not she stood a chance. Hmm, the blonde boy pondered. Well, normally I'd say Sakura-chan, but I feel her as more of a sister now than anything, he grinned at the girl, who drunkly giggled. Ten-ten's nice, but I don't really know her that well. She looks like a fun person, but not necessarily someone I date. Ino's not my type, so, probably Hinata. She is really sweet and brave and never gives up, he grinned and Hinata nearly fainted from blushing. Luckily, she stood her ground. Ino, truth or dare? Naruto asked. Dare. I dare you to kiss someone in this room. Fine, and with that, Ino walked to Kiba and kissed him on the cheek. They both blushed, Kiba's flushed cheeks looked strange because of his red marks, and Ino sat down. Truthfully, she had taken interest in the Inazuka, who had caught her attention with his feralness. And she had caught his with her wit. All in all, neither would complain about the dare. Sakura, truth or dare? The blonde girl asked. Truth, who would you rather kiss? Sasuke or Choji? The pinkette stared at her best friend, suddenly very much sober. How was she supposed to answer that question without hurting anybody, really? She still liked Sasuke and Ino knew that, but on the other hand, she didn't trust him so much anymore. Ever since that night two weeks ago she had been dangling between being broken and determined. She thought of something, maybe it would work, if it's on the cheek, I wouldn't mind kissing either of them. No can do, just choose already. Ino ushered, Sasuke looked at Sakura and saw her frown, no, pout. 
He had guessed that she would choose him, because she would think that it wouldn't mean anything. But why did she hesitate? Did she really not trust him that much? And why, even after knowing the logical answer, the Uchiha was still unsure whether or not she would actually choose him. Then, she giggled drunkly yet again. Fine, fine. Um, maybe. Choji. No, f fence. Sasuke, she smiled awkwardly. Suddenly, the room became awfully still. Sakura looked around and chuckled. What? Choji's a real nice guy, even though he chubby. Yeah, real nice, she winked at the startled brunette. Everyone took a deep breath. Well, that explained everything. She was stone drunk. Sakura scanned the room, searching for a victim. Neji, truth or dare? Truth, the Hayuga replied nonchalantly. Have you ever used your Byakugan for, I dunno, something not decent? If Neji wasn't trained, he would have blushed like a schoolgirl right there and then. But he was, so he replied indifferently as usual. No, I haven't. You sure? Because I saw you eyeing Tenten Chan a few minutes ago with a funny expression on your face. Damn, the Haruno was more observant than Neji would have liked at that moment. Said girl was currently rolling on the floor laughing. Tenten blushed furiously and Neji almost followed, but managed to stay calm. Yes, I'm sure. That wasn't what you think it was. Then what, was it? She slurred after finally taking a breath. Neji couldn't just tell her that he liked Tenten and Sakura knew that. She wasn't trying to get him to admit his feelings, just to confirm her theory about them. And she did. Tenten didn't know what to think. Could Neji? No, of course not. They were just teammates, after all, and he looked as uninterested in her as one could get. Was just checking to see if she's okay. She drank a lot, just like you did. I think it's my turn. Neji turned to his cousin, Hanata-sama, truth or dare? Truth. What would you do if this was your last day? I tell everyone that I'm glad that I got to meet all of you, she answered honestly, making everyone drunk aw. A and I'd confess to the b-boy I like, she managed to utter, then blushed furiously. Naruto noticed that and thought what a lucky person her crush was. Hinata was sweet and caring, but strong at times when she had to be. However, she seemed very gentle most of the time, which made her seem vulnerable, like glass. Unconsciously, Naruto clenched his fists. That bastard better make her happy or else. Sakura and Shikamaru both saw Naruto's hands and thought that maybe, just maybe there was hope. Hinata chose to ask Tenten. Tenten san, truth or dare? Dare, I dare you to do a trick with some weaponry. Okay, Tenten said, pulling some kanai and a plate-sized plastic ring. She started joggling with the kanai and every time she threw one in the air, it would pass through the ring twice. She did it in different variants, joggling with one arm, with a finger, even with her nose, Ino gagged at that moment, but, nevertheless, was impressed, and she did it so fast that the ring didn't even fall to the ground. When she finished, everyone applauded her as she took her place once again, bowing happily. Choji, truth or dare? Truth, if you had to choose one dish to eat every day for a week straight, what would it be? Choji explained in 10 minutes, and in a way that almost made Shikamaru feel shame, the good and bad qualities of some of his favorite meals. Eventually, he chose pork barbecue with vegetables as a side. Kiba, truth or dare? Dare, I dare you to give Akamaru to someone else for the rest of the night. Kiba widened his eyes, what? Why? Just do it, Choji replied as he was munching on another crisp. Kiba growled but, nevertheless, set Akamaru down from his lap and told his best friend to choose where to sit. After scanning the room, the dog went to a surprised Eno, who took him in her lap. Apparently, even the dog knew that something was up between the two. The game continued. Lee, truth or dare? Dare, the taijutsu user answered enthusiastically. I dare you to do 500 sit-ups and if you don't succeed, I'll give you something else to do. Fine with me. Lee started the sit-ups right away. Although he hadn't trained for some time due to the surgery, he was used to doing about 3,000 sit-ups. That was why he was really surprised when he only managed to do 499. As he looked at Kiba expectantly, he made a mental note to resume training with Gay Sensei as soon as possible. I dare you to kiss Sakura's hand, the boy with the gray jacket, which he, for some reason, hadn't take off, said. Sakura and Lee were surprised and were both blushing. Only Shikamaru, Naruto and Ino caught sight of Sasuke's well-hidden scowl, but that was just because they were looking for it. Apparently, 
A drunken Uchiha was an Uchiha that showed cracks in the ever-present facade. Li looked at Sakura and asked, Sakura-san, is there a problem if I do this? Course not, Li, Hik, San. S just a dare, after all. Li nodded, understanding, leaned in and slightly kissed her hand. After that, they were both blushing furiously. It was Li's turn, Shikamaru-san, truth or dare? Truth, a dare is too troublesome. Do you think this mission has been successful so far? Shikamaru was surprised by the question, but answered, Yes, I think so. We did get to know each other a bit better. Now, anyone want to go to bed? They all shook their heads to show that they didn't, they all had a lot of energy after the previous game. Especially the members of Team 7 who, to Sasuke's biggest regret, had drank the most. If he was feeling dizzy, then Sakura looked ready to pass out, and Naruto seemed more annoying than usual. Shikamaru usually had more energy than he liked to show, so he agreed to stay awake for a little while longer. He and Sakura decided to play a game of shoji, while Hinata and Lee watched them. Kiba and Ino were sitting in a corner, talking quietly to each other while the girl was stroking Akamaru, who was still in her lap. They were talking about animals in general and Kiba announced that he had always found goldfish very interesting. Ino blushed at that, but only barely visible, of course. After all, she was Yamanaka Ino. Boys should blush because of her and dream of her, not the other way around. Sasuke being the exception. But that was beside the point, she had dignity. Although, she was starting to question if it was worth keeping it and if Kiba would agree to keep it. Naruto, Sasuke, Neji, Shino, Tenten and Choji were playing poker. Sasuke and Neji both had good game insight even without using their bloodline limits while Shino and Tenten were both skilled players and Naruto and Choji were just really lucky. With everybody being nearly in the same phase of soberness, the odds were more or less equal. They weren't betting anything else aside from their dignity, in the form of paper notes, which the Hayuga and the Uchiha took pretty seriously. They ended with five victories for Naruto, who had some experience besides luck, Tenten and Sasuke, four for Neji and Shino and three for Choji. The drinks were really getting to them and they decided to call it a night. Kiba and Ino saw them stand up from the table where they had been playing and all of them went to the one where Sakura and Shikamaru were still playing Shoji. Sakura was trying hard not to leave Shikamaru with no means of escape, because she knew that if she pushed him to thinking of a strategy, it was game over for her. She actually wasn't as drunk as she pretended to be, though she was very good at hiding it, Shikamaru had to give her that. She was very dizzy, obviously, but not quite the fool she made herself look. Eventually, she did corner him, he thought of a strategy and won. They stood up and started cleaning the table. Thank you for playing with me, the pinkette bowed her head down slightly, in order to show respect. To her surprise, he did the same. Thank you for playing as well. Not many people have played with me and you proved yourself a worthy opponent, he smiled lazily at her and she tiredly returned it. She had played as best as she could and she did win something in the end, respect. Something she had been wanting in a very long time. When he saw Sakura and Shikamaru smile at each other and showing respect, Sasuke was reminded of the earlier game. His chest tightened, but not of jealousy. He was simply envious of the way the two treated each other, with respect. Something which he had most likely lost after what happened two weeks ago. Too bad he started caring about her respect towards him and started respecting her himself much too late. He wanted the old days back, the days in which he would protect her all the time, not like now, when she could protect herself and, more importantly, risk her life for his. Like she had in, the forest of death. Such thoughts continued to pester him even after they called, lights out, and the others were long asleep. He even dreamt about such things after he had finally fallen asleep. Or at least he dreamt about them until he heard the sound of shattering glass and a scream coming from the next room. The new Sakura. Sasuke and the others woke up and immediately started running quietly and quickly, like real ninja, to the west wing, where the girls were and from where the scream was heard. While running, Neji activated his Byakugan and saw Sakura being held as captive with a hand around her neck from a person with a black costume and mask. There were two other men with him who were pointing at the other girls with their weapons, two long katanas. Ino was the one who had screamed. Neji reported this to the other boys and didn't miss their clenched fists. By the time they reached the door, 
Sasuke had already activated his Sharingan and was ready to burst through it. Eventually, they managed to calm themselves down, realizing that they wouldn't help the girls like that. Speaking of who, Ino, Hinata and Tenten were staring, scared, at Sakura and the invaders. They started thinking and calmed themselves down, but didn't show it, they didn't want to look suspicious. Sakura, however, had already devised a plan. She, like the other girls, was fully aware that the boys had already arrived. There was a paper panel that was see-through on the outside, so they were watching and waiting for an opportunity to attack. After a moment of silence, the one who was holding Sakura started talking. Which one of you lives here? Hand me everything precious you have or this girl. He locked his arm around Sakura tighter, will die. No one answered. Fine then, I guess you don't see a. No, wait, I live here. Sakura shouted, surprising everyone. However, the girls didn't show it and the guys were waiting to see what she was going to do. She started blinking rapidly, as if trying to hold back tears. Please, I'll show you where the jewelry and money is, just leave my friends alone. We are only civilians, my parents just have a good business, please, let us go. Business, you say? So, they may want to pay a small ransom for their daughter? The one holding the pink head smirked and walked closer to his subordinates. Maybe we should take her with us instead, eh? Then, they would pay much more than what they have here. The three men laughed and the two swordsmen turned around. That was a mistake. Sakura quickly proceeded with her plan, pumping chakra in her foot and kicking the man who held her hard from behind. Tsunade had told her how to do that just a few days ago, but Sakura was a fast learner and had good chakra control, so she quickly got the hang of it. Her punches and kicks weren't as hard as her teachers but she, like her, had great strength to begin with. That's why the man held his leg and for that was quickly knocked out with a punch. The boys were just about to come out from their hiding place, but Shikamaru stopped them. Before, when Sakura was pretending to hold back tears, she was actually doing a Morse code by blinking. The message was, I have a plan. If the plan involved them, she would have told them. So, he decided to leave her to it. The other boys followed his lead and watched. Not that there was much left to watch. When Sakura had punched the one who had held her captive, the other two men had turned around and then to the other's girls to threaten, but they had disappeared. They were actually hiding behind another paper panel on the other side of the room since the men had first started talking about taking Sakura with them, leaving some bunch in behind. They were waiting for an opening, but it never came. The two intruders were left stupefied for a moment, which gave Sakura enough time to press two pressure points on both of their necks resulting in them falling unconscious like their partner. Although she had just started training with people, Sakura had done a lot of reading for the past days and knew how to knock out her enemies effectively and for a long enough period of time. After the men fell, everyone came out of their hiding places and looked at Sakura with new eyes. She really was no longer a Sasuke fangirl and all brains but no skill, no, now, she was a kunoichi, able to take care of herself and others, too. She blushed under their gazes. They all congratulated her, called the police. After the Uchiha massacre the Hokage had employed some Shun In and Junin to work there, and tied the three men to a pillar. It turned out that they didn't have to. The police came before the intruders woke up. The authorities suggested that the young shinobi all slept in the east wing and locked all the doors that surrounded the room, in which the window had been broken. They were all tired and didn't protest. They just answered the office's questions, wished them a good night, and the girls moved their stuff to the east wing. Then they all waited for Sasuke to lock the doors before collapsing back to sleep. The next morning Sasuke was the first to wake up. It was quite surprising, considering that he spent the first half of the night dreaming and thinking about the new Sakura, and the other half. Doing the same thing, not that he was the only one, of course. The others had too thought about Sakura's change and were glad about it. One less Sasuke fangirl was always a good reason to celebrate and even Ino didn't seem interested in the Uchiha anymore, something for which Kiba was very glad. He just hoped that he hadn't made too much of a fool himself last night. Sasuke got up and decided to be a good host and prepare breakfast. As he was walking to the door, he saw Sakura stir. She sat up in her sleeping bag and rubbed her eyes. She stood up. Oh, good morning, Sasuke, she said sleepily and yawned. HN, I see you're awake, let's get dressed and make breakfast, eh? They picked up their clothes, they had slept in pajamas. 
Without another word Sasuke went to a bathroom down the hall and gestured for Sakura to go to another one. They came out about 10 minutes later, showered and fully dressed, and headed towards the kitchen. What shall we prepare? The girl asked. HN. I don't know, the boy replied. They eventually started making omelets. Sasuke put some tomatoes with his. After they were done they started cleaning the counter, which was covered with eggshells. Sasuke then looked at Sakura and saw that she had some in her hair. He raised an eyebrow at her. The pink had noticed that and touched her hair, only to find small pieces of eggshell. She caught Sasuke smirking and got pissed off, and a little bit embarrassed, so she picked up some leftover tomato slices and dumped them in his hair. Sakura smiled sweetly upon seeing the scowl on his face. Oh, Sasuke-kun, I know how much you love tomatoes and decided that you might want some as an accessory, she mocked him in her fangirl voice, once reserved specially for him. That was the moment when the others decided to come in and, seeing the Uchiha with tomatoes in his hair and the ex-fangirl laughing at him was enough to wake them up fully and they started laughing along. Sasuke's scowl only deepened and he threw some eggs at her. Sakura sidestepped and the eggs ended up on the front of Naruto's t-shirt, his jacket was open. He frowned and threw some at him in return, but the prodigy dodged and Ino got some in her hair. And so the biggest food fight that Konoha had ever hosted began. They hid, turned a couple of bowls. Luckily, they were plastic. Sasuke even considered activating his Sharingan for a moment, but he was actually having fun and didn't want it to end. They ended up back to back, separated by the counter. They divided in two teams, all except Shino, who said that his bugs didn't like it. The others weren't sure what to make of his open answer yet, and Shikamaru, who said it was too troublesome but who knew for a fact that the most enjoyable position in those kinds of events was as a spectator. The teams were Sasuke, Ino, Neji, Lee and Hinata and Sakura, Naruto, Kiba, Choji and Tenten. They were all breathing heavily, they had been going on like that for about 10 minutes. The whole kitchen was a mess, their clothes were dirty, but luckily the omelets were in the dining room, already served with napkins, forks and everything. All of the fighters had a handful of eggs and tomatoes. They decided on one final attack and jumped at the same time. They both threw the last of their ammo at each other and fell, again separated by the counter. Sakura started laughing and even Sasuke's lips turned up. However, when he stood, his face was in his usual stone facade. Annoying, he huffed at her. That only made her laugh even harder and everyone joined, except Shino and Sasuke, but they both smiled. The Aburame and Shikamaru even agreed to do some of the cleaning. The first ones that came out of the shower and the ones that had to wait, they may have been in a mansion, but there weren't 1000 bathrooms, helped and by the end they had all cleaned themselves and the mess was taken care of. Then they sat in the dining room and had a nice breakfast, although the omelets were cool. They talked for a bit and decided to report that they all thought the mission to be a success. On the way to the Hokage mansion the citizens of Konoha stared at them. Some of them were the Hokage's assistants' children, with admiration, the grown-ups, assessingly, the other girls and boys. Some with envy, some nonchalantly and some were already on the way to becoming fangirls, fanboys. Kiba and Naruto just waved and smiled. The later nudged the other and told him that his fangirls were more in comparison. Shino caught that and remarked that Sasuke's fangirls remained the biggest number. Naruto huffed and started a glaring contest with the Uchiha. It went on for a while, but the blonde boy grinned and the black haired turned his head around, so that no one could see the slightly upturned corners of his mouth. He had an image, after all. Naruto then started teasing Kiba and Ino, calling them, lovebirds, and asking when they will make their relationship official. Ino hit him and told him that maybe, just maybe if he wasn't such an idiot he would have been able to get a girlfriend. Almost everyone laughed at that statement, Neji, Shino and Sasuke just smirked while Hinata blushed. Even Naruto stopped fake frowning and grinned again, putting his hands behind his neck like usual. They arrived at the Hokage office and Shizun greeted them. Tsunade lifted her head from the paperwork on her desk. Hello, everyone. So, how did it go? We are here to report that the mission was a success, Shikamaru stated. They had all agreed earlier that Shikamaru should be the leader of the team. Even Naruto didn't complain being a chunin and the most intelligent. He was the most qualified one. That's good, Tsunade replied, setting the papers down, we heard of the accident. 
What happened? Well, the police already questioned us. The lazy shinobi replied. Yes, but I want to hear it from you. I haven't had enough time to read the report, the Hokage demanded. Basically, Sakura beat up their asses. Naruto, I'm having a headache and your screaming doesn't help. Now, tell me the whole story. Who is them and what did they do? The Genin and Chunin explained how they woke up from the sound of glass shattering, how Sakura was taken hostage, how she lied that she owned the house, the following short battle and ended with the police arriving. Well done, Sakura, Tsunade smiled proudly at her Apriantis, who smiled back. Well, in this case, do you think you can handle missions together from now on? Yes, we can, Shikamaru replied. In this case, I have something for... The Hokage was interrupted by a Chunin bursting through the door. Tsunade-sama. The bandits who attacked the Uchiha mansion last night have escaped. Asterisk Morse code is a method of transmitting text information as a series of on-off tones. Lights or clicks that can be directly understood by a skilled listener or observer without special equipment, Wikipedia. In this chapter Sakura is doing it by blinking, meaning that we have longer and shorter blinks for different characters. If she is doing it fast there may be some mistakes in deciphering it, but Shikamaru is a good observer as mentioned in the previous chapter. Omake. Kiba and Ino's talk. Kiba and Ino sat in one of the corners of the room in the Uchiha mansion. The boy originally wanted to play poker with the others, he could easily recognize when they lie, since people become nervous and it affects their smell. However, the Yamanaka had interested him and he wanted to learn more about her. Even if it was through her pet, he never knew that goldfishes could prove to be so interesting, for example, they only hear what they want to. If you talk to them and you say food they'll listen, but if it's about something else, they won't. Eno talked about her pet with a glint in the eye. She was an animal lover, all right. And Akamaru seemed to like her. He had been sitting in her lap peacefully ever since the truth or dare game. If it were someone else, besides Hinata and Shino, the dog would have tried to escape. They talked and Kiba found other interesting things about her. He didn't know what possessed him to say that he thought that goldfishes were awesome. He hoped that it was a good thing, if the fact that Ino had a glint in the eye when she spoke to him for the rest of the night could be counted as one. The whole room stood still at those words. What do you mean? How? Tsunade asked. It seems that they have used some kind of poison on the bars of their cells and left overnight without anyone noticing. We still don't know how they have managed to hide the poison from the shinobi who checked them, nor how the ones on guard have been poisoned too. A tracking team caught their trail about 30 minutes ago and headed towards them. They promised to send us a report in about an hour. I came here as soon as I could. I don't understand. Ba-chan, what's going on? Hokage-sama, what should we do? Shikamaru questioned. Let me think it all over. Tsunade started rubbing her temples, silencing the room. After about a minute, she let her hands fall at her sides, eyes resolved, voice steady. First, we should assume that the robbery wasn't their real purpose. If they were skilled enough to sneak poison without the guards noticing and able to knock them out when they didn't even show that much strength last night, then their attack on the Uchiha mansion must have had another meaning. Plus, they managed to take down two Janin, and taking all of the already mentioned happenings, I doubt it was a stroke of luck either. Reconnaissance, then? They might have just been sent here to gather information on us, the Nara suggested. But they only held Sakura hostage, even when she wasn't the one sleeping closest to an exit, Ino reminded. And she was also the only one they witnessed fight. If they needed any more information, they would have stayed after they had escaped, not leave the village. Which means, which means that their target was me, the pink had finished. Everyone looked at her, she was staring at the door. Ever since the start of Team 7, Sakura had always been useless. She had watched Naruto and Sasuke's backs all the time. They were the ones to fight, the ones to protect her. And she didn't give it too much thought until that time when the Uchiha had called her a lower level ninja than Naruto but it had changed during the second exam. The cut of her hair had been her symbol of maturing, of finally being able to do something. Ever since she had cut it, she had tried to be useful to the team. True, Naruto and Sasuke still had done most of the fighting, but she had tried, like that time they had had to help Morino Idate. She had tried to fight. She had provided first aid to her teammates when they were wounded, she had done everything she could. She had noticed that she had great strength, her talent for genjutsu, the way she could tend wounds pretty well. 
She had thought that maybe, just maybe she had started being useful, that she had became stronger. But it still wasn't enough. When Sasuke had left, she hadn't, she couldn't, do anything to stop him. She had just stood there, frozen, being pathetic and weak and annoying. All the things she had convinced herself she had left behind. The morning after the first day without him, she had decided that she would become strong, no matter what, and hope and pray that when Naruto brought Sasuke back, she would be stronger. She would be able to make him stay. She had started working hard on becoming a medic nin and had learned a lot for two weeks. She liked it, she liked her teacher, she liked the things she learned, everything. And now, those men were mocking her, letting her defeat them, they were mocking her hard work. And hell was she angry. Sakura clenched her fists and looked up to the others, who were giving her odd glances. Even Neji and Sasuke's features had softened a bit. When they saw her angry expression, they were startled. But what she said next surprised them even more. Then let's go after them. Sakura, you can't just. Shisho, last night the Jonin assured us that they would look after these men. However, they said that they were the last of their rank, that all the other Jonin were on missions. Now, these men require medical attention and can't fight. The rest of them and most of the Chunin are on missions. The tracking team is just that. A tracking team, they don't have that much experience in fighting. We are the only ones left. Plus, we are 12 and they are 2. Even if they are stronger than us, we could beat them with good teamwork, Sakura stated, rendering everyone silent, this time not just with the glint in her eyes that said how badly she wanted to chase after the ones who had humiliated her but also by her calm reasoning. Tsunade started thinking. What Sakura said was true. They were the only ones left. She sighed and made a decision, one she hoped they would understand. Fine. Then, I will assign a mission. Shino, Shikamaru, Neji, and Jiraiya will go after these men. You are only to follow them, not engage in any way. I will tell Jiraiya, who will be the team leader, about the mission. I simply cannot let all of you go. We know nothing about their motives, who they work with, nothing. A four-man squad is sent out. Jiraiya is a Sanin with experience in intel gathering. Shikamaru is a Chunin and is the most logical choice as such. Shino, like the rest of Team 8, specializes in tracking, but is also useful for information gathering and combat, should it be needed. Neji is very good at combat and tracking. I will not send anyone from Team 7, because your emotions may start guiding your decisions. This is my only concern, for both you, and the rest. I do not doubt your capabilities as shinobi. I merely try sending who I think is best for the mission, understood? Team 7 looked ready to protest, but thought better, at least Sakura and Sasuke did. They had to, restrain Naruto from saying anything. The others looked around nervously, and eventually muttered a, hi. And you, the Hokage turned towards the one who had brought the news, watch out for the report and bring it immediately to me. Yes, Hokage-sama, was the reply and the Chunin left, the twelve other shinobi at his toes. Tsunade sighed and looked at Shizun, did I do the right thing? There was nothing better you could have done. Yes, Tsunade paused, you're right. The goddamn reached out for a bottle of sake in one of the cupboards in her desk. Shizun didn't stop her, the Kona had twelve met after twenty minutes as agreed. The ones that were assigned the mission had already prepared, and the others were there to see them off. Normally, giving mission details to shinobi not part of said mission was against the protocol, but Tsunade chose not to comment on it. If they knew the details, at least they might calm down a bit, she reasoned. Here is the report of the tracking nins, the goddam handed Shikamaru a scroll and explained, the two men have headed to the country of Rice Field, specifically towards a forest there. We don't know why, Tsunade noticed Sasuke frowning. What is it, Uchiha? The country of rice field is where Orochimaru's hideout is, the prodigy replied. For a moment, everyone froze. What, are you sure? Kiba asked. That's where the Sound Four were taking me in order to meet him. They said his base was in a small clearing in some mountain woods there. The important question is why Orochimaru would send his men to find more about Sakura, when he was after Sasuke, Neji reminded. Naruto and Sasuke glanced at each other and nodded. It is true that Orochimaru is after me, he agreed to give me power, Sasuke started slowly. But his real aim was to take over Sasuke's body to use it as a container. He has an immortality jutsu of some sort, but he needs a new body every few years, Naruto continued. 
We don't know whether or not he has already used this technique and gotten a new body. The sound four were in a hurry to get me there. Sasuke took up the conversation again. So, even if he has taken a new body, it still doesn't make sense, what might he want with Sakura? Ino asked, because, in order to take Sasuke's body, he would now have to fight us, Shikamaru replied, he needs a general idea of our abilities, especially of Naruto and Sakura's, who are closest to him. I already fought him at the Chunin exam, Naruto remembered, which leaves Sakura. But he probably knows that we would chase those men, so why did he make them go back to him? Because it's a trap, this time it was Tenten. Silence fell over the room for a while. So what? Sakura was still full of surprises, even if it is a trap. This is probably the best lead we'd ever get on him. We can't wait for the Jonin to finish their missions. We have to act, and fast, even if it's only a few of us. We, the rest, could look up Ricefield country and see what we can find. If we wait for him to strike again, I don't even want to think about the consequences this time. Something has to be done now. Couldn't have said it better myself, a new voice piped in. Everybody turned towards the door. Greetings, young Jenin. I am Jiraiya, the great toad sage of the Sanin, and your team leader. Their trip to the rice field country was quiet. Too quiet. The air was heavy. The four shinobi had been trailing their targets for a while now, and they were all very tense. Jiraiya had said at the start of the mission that they would keep a distance of at least 30 meters so as to not be sensed, but still be able to track the missing men. The Sanin had not led a team in quite a while but reasoned that the boys were sensible and would listen to him, unlike a certain godson of his. Neji was, admittedly, scared, but tried to reason with himself. They were four, two Jenin, a Chunin, and even another Sanin. He knew he could and would trust all of them. Like Tsunade had said, they were all perfectly suited for this mission. But then again, they were facing a Sanin, the most ruthless one at that. Shikamaru already thought that whole situation way too troublesome but he understood Sakura's reason behind it. In any case, she was right, they were the only available team. The rest were on missions. Still, he had a nudging feeling inside of his chest, which meant that something was going to go wrong. Too late to be sorry, anyway. He sighed. Shino was trying to make his bugs scout the area in front of them, so that if any of the missing nin tried to surprise them, he would know before they even tried. Plus, it helped keep his mind off of things, because, although he knew why they were doing what they were doing, he wasn't exactly enthralled with it. They reached the border with the rice field country by sunset. Their targets had decided to stop and rest for the night, and so the four of them had to, too. It wasn't like they minded taking a break, and it gave Jiraiya an opportunity to place a tracking seal on the ones they were following, which would, in turn, make their journey easier tomorrow. However, just taking into consideration what they were about to do the very next day was proving to be more taxing on the mind than anticipated. And so, while wondering what the rest of their comrades were doing in Konoha, the four shinobi slowly fell asleep. Omake. Youthful love. After about two hours, Kakashi, Asuma, Kurenai, Gai and Tsunade were finally finished with the training program for their students. It hadn't been a too difficult task. They all knew their students fairly well and thus the discussion went smoothly. Then, Kakashi decided to play matchmaker. Jiraiya's novels had really gotten to him, and not just the porn part, but the romantic one as well. And you didn't have to be blind to notice Asuma and Kurenai's feelings for each other. He pulled Guy aside and told him about his plan. His rival agreed immediately to help, shouting about how youthful love was and how it can help them to further preserve their own youth. Kakashi sweat dropped but said nothing. The Kopi Nin casually walked to Asuma and Kurenai after they exited Tsunade's office and asked, Say, have you guys ever thought of getting into a relationship? They looked at him, astounded, and then Guy shouted, Ah, yes, how youthful love is. It could increase everyone's youthfulness drastically. You, Yuhi Kurenai, are one youthful flower and you, Serutobi Asuma, are one mighty oak. May the flames of youth burn brightly within you. Both senseis looked disturbed and reddened. There is nothing between us, Asuma protested. What he said, Kurenai agreed, her face color almost matching the one of her eyes, we are just good friends. Really good friends at that. Kakashi smiled smugly under his mask. What are you implying, Kakashi? The sensei of Team 10 asked, clearly frustrated. Absolutely nothing, Asuma. 
I just asked you if any of you had ever thought of getting into a relationship, I didn't say it had to be with each other. Then again, if that is your automatically assumption, I don't see why you cannot be with each other, Kakashi said and Shunshin ed away with Guy following his lead. So, Asuma started after the awkward silence had dragged on for too long. So, Kuranai continued, just ask her out already. I've already made a bet with Kakashi that she wouldn't agree, so you should be fine, Tsunade shouted from her office. She was watching from her Hokage crystal ball, courtesy of the Sandane, and they were just below her office window. Asuma reddened even more and blurted, Well, Kuranai, will you go out with me? Yes, I will, she replied and both left to prepare for their mission, still as red. Yash, Kakashi, you sure know how to make the flames of youth burn brightly. Now, all we have to do is find you a youthful flower. Guy stated, coming from behind the tree he was hiding. Kakashi stepped from the other one and said nothing, the thought of Guy playing matchmaker for him was way too terrifying. You could ask Anko, I bet she would have everything against it, the goddam again yelled from her window. That's exactly what I'm afraid of, the copy nin muttered and went back to his apartment to prepare for his mission. The next morning they all woke up early, none of them had really gotten any sleep, and crossed the border by dawn. The Sanin, Chunin and Jenin traveled the whole morning, only stopping for breakfast at a tea house. At that point in time, they weren't worried about where the people they were trailing were. They had gotten ahead, and Jiraiya's tracking seal seemed to be working fine. So, they took their sweet time discussing strategy while keeping a leisurely pace. Just as they were deciding the final parts a boy suddenly jumped on the road. Two figures attacked him and the leaf shinobi rushed to his aid. Seeing the bigger group, the two assaulters ran away in the forest. The boy had a deep gash on the arm. He was wearing a light purple-gray vest, dark green shorts, beige sandals, a wristband on each hand and a dark blue mask, showing only his brown eyes and a shock of ginger hair. After Shino did what he could with the healing bomb Hinata had sent him and the bandages he had on himself, the person was revealed as a girl named Sasama. Thank you for saving me, she said and took off her mask. She didn't look so relieved for someone who bad just been saved from potential mortal danger, and the rest noted it as such. Why were they after you? Neji asked her, who are you? Sasama asked instead, are you Shinobi? Yes, we are, Jiraiya confirmed, what about you? Sasama sighed, rubbing the back of her head. Well, it's a long story, but I can tell you while we walk. They started on the road again and listened to her tale, about her clan, Orochimaru recruiting her cousin, her quest to save him. Even though the group of shinobi pretty much knew where they were headed, they let her lead the way. Meanwhile, a discussion was held between the team from Konoha whether or not to help her. Jiraiya was worried about a confrontation with Orochimaru, but eventually decided to allow his team to help, especially after the Naruto will never forgive you card was drawn. After some traveling, they reached a mountain. Sasama offered them food with a sleeping drug in it. Later, they confronted her and the bandits defeated them and set out again, having shown her she could trust them. No one would admit it, but everyone became nervous as they neared Orochimaru's lair, even Jiraiya. Eventually, they reached the cave hidden among the trees. Neji checked the entrance for traps and people, but there were none. They told Sasama to go back to her clan and she turned around, bidding them goodbye. Then the rest walked down a corridor, which divided into three more. They were four, so they decided that Jiraiya would go alone, Shikamaru and Shino, together, leaving Neji also alone. They wished luck to each other before taking their separate corridors, knowing they might as well need it in a place as dark as this. To be honest, the ones from the twelve that were back in Konoha were all at least a bit worried about their comrades. Everything that had happened in the last few months made the Genin feel as if they'd had enough for the year. The Chunin exams and sound invasion, the third dying, Tsunade taking his place, Sasuke leaving, Sasuke's retrieval, the formation of the new team, the attack, and now the mission. It wasn't even May yet. The Genin were, in all honesty, still trying to wrap their heads around everything that had happened, because it still felt too fast, even if it had been weeks or months. The recent developments and lack of missions, because Team 7 needed to be monitored at all time, otherwise Kami knew what they would do, only left more spare time to ponder on everything. Choji, for his part, was strongly affected by it all. Due to his kind heart and fondness of the old man, 
The third's death had been a great shock. Sometimes, though he hadn't admitted that to anyone, he still had nightmares about the man he had felt was his own grandfather. As for the twelve, he was actually quite excited about how it would all turn out. Really, the only people he had perceived as his friends so far had been Shikamaru, his best friend, and Ino, because hell, even she had her moments. Kiba and Naruto had once been childhood playmates, but nothing more. And so, he was glad, because his team had expanded into a family full of cousins with colorful personalities, and it made life in general more interesting. Ino, had she known what Choji was thinking, would have agreed with him. It was true that she felt as if Choji and Shikamaru were her only friends, even though her relationship with Sakura had gotten a lot better. The last few months had helped her recognize the fact that there was a different side to everyone, and it made her more open and acceptable of other people she couldn't seem to stand before, namely Naruto. She too felt as if the newly formed team would result in something bigger and better. Shikamaru quickly analyzed their situation. Not that there was much to analyze, he and Shino were in the middle of a corridor and an unnaturally large snake was coming towards them. He didn't like their predicament, not one bit. TCH, he grumbled, then turned to his teammate, you think your insects can devour that much chakra? Shino glanced at the approaching snake quickly. It's a summon, if I am correct. If we stall for long enough, they should be able to. Not like we have a lot of choices, Shikamaru sighed briefly, hands already going through the familiar signs of his binding technique. Let's do it, then, he added just as he hit the final seal. Tenten, for her part, was strongly reminded of her mother, whom she had lost a long time ago. Her mother had had a knack for crafting and playing musical instruments just like her father had for weapons. From her Tenten had inherited her musical talent, something that no one, besides her father, knew about. Since her mother's death she had had to start helping her father in his shop and her childhood had been cut in half. On the other hand, it was one of the things that had inspired her to become a ninja. They often came across the shop to buy weapons and she had often admired them from afar, so it had led her to meet the rest of Team Guy, as well as everyone else from the Konoha 12, something which she was really thankful for. She was slowly getting to know them and had a feeling that their camaraderie was going to last. Lee had learned to live in solitude a long time ago. He was an orphan, the one everyone in the academy made fun of because of his underdeveloped chakra coils, and to say that Team Guy was the shining light in his life would not be an over-exaggeration. He had been teamed up with a genius, and a prodigy of her own, although she hadn't decided to take up her family's craft seriously until later. He himself hadn't stood out with anything at the time, he wasn't even sure how he had passed that academy test in the first place. Still, he was glad he had for it had lead him to meet such amazing people, Sakura-chan was among the most notable, of course, of whom he already thought as excellent comrades. It reminded him of the early days of Team Guy. Although their relationship had been rocky at best in the beginning, they had learned to cooperate, at the very least. But even that cooperation seemed to be enough, given the fact that they were the only ones from their generation of rookies to survive through the sound invasion. It had weighed on their consciousness for some time. Why them? Why not the other two teams, which had had perfect teamwork? The ones who truly carried the will of fire and thought of each other as family. Once, Neji might have called it fate, because neither of the other teams had a clan genius, a weapon mistress, or one of Konoha's strongest janin, and, grudgingly, his not-so-useless protege. Now, Lee realized it had been sheer dumb luck. Neji faced the young woman with a calm expression, cautiously sipping his tea. If the few scrolls he had previously read on poisoning were anything to go by, the hot beverage wasn't dangerous. He patiently sat through the dinner offerings, which he had politely declined. He had accepted the tea to gain time to assess his opponent, and the sweet talking. Once his host took out the flute though, he decided it was time for action. Her hair was a bother, at the very least, but it was nothing he couldn't deal with. Sure, he couldn't use Jukin on it, but with all of the weapon practice he had gotten with Tenten, he had a few rather creative ideas as to how to use a kanai, so he knew he would be able to hold it off until he got close enough to take care of his opponent. Kiba was on edge, he felt like getting up and going for a walk, but he imagined his scowling expression would scare some of the villagers. And so, he lay on his bed, deep in thought, silently petting Akamaru, who was sleeping next to him. Kiba's frustration came from a few things, namely, the fact that he was stuck in Konoha, worrying about his teammates, 
slight jealousy that he was not chosen for the mission, and the fact that he was feeling the former. Because, really, the second he could deal with. But the first? Yeah, they were facing a Sanin, but they had one with them. So why was he worrying? It wasn't like he really cared about them, right? This may have sounded wrong to anybody should they somehow know what he was thinking. He was from the Inazuka clan, right? He was supposed to care for his pack, right? Yes, but no. His pack included whoever he decided it included. And, to be honest, most of the people on the mission weren't considered from it. Sure, Shikamaru was a childhood friend, and Shino turned out not to be that bad, and the previous day had been fun, but that didn't matter. It didn't, really. It shouldn't have. Because, once an Inazuka got attached to a person, they got attached. Literally. They would do anything for them, die for them, kill for them, you name it. It was something that was only really known between the clan members, the weakness to having friends and close people, even within the clan. That was why his mother was always so rough, and his sister, so detached. Because the Inazuka's attachment was usually their downfall, whether it caused them to do something completely reckless and get themselves, and everyone else, killed, or become a monster just because of that one person. When you were a kid, it was fine, because kids have this innocence to them, the same that pups did. However, kids grew into adults, and pups into dogs, or, in his clan's case, wolves. The day his mother had explained that to him he had stopped questioning his father's death. And so, he found himself in a very complicated situation, because caring on his part could lead to a lot of things, most of them not good. At this point in time though, he realized that he could either evoke confusion and questions if he avoided the others, or go with the flow and hope that nothing bad happened. For the first time, Kiba prayed that Naruto's therapy no jutsu be used on him. Hinata was training under her usual spot in the waterfall, mind full of everything. Water, as she had discovered recently, had a soothing effect on her. As a kid, she had loved baths just as the next person, and the fact that she could afford it was a plus. Still, she had never given it much thought, but recent events had made her find her solace in water. She thought that it was what made her different than her fellow clansmen. All of the Hyuga were stoic and calm, precisely what earth symbolized, while water was the opposite, the element of emotion. It was all quite ironic when you thought about it. While Hinata reflected on everything that had happened in the past few days, she found herself hoping that everyone on the mission was alright, and excited for what was to come after it. She had a good feeling about all of it, really. The twelve of them kind of fit. Different people, different strengths, different weaknesses. But then again, a puzzle could never be complete with the same pieces, could it? Shino was silent as he and Shikamaru walked through the corridor in the aftermath of their battle with the snake summon. If he had to be honest, it all felt surreal to him. One day he is going on, minding his own business, next thing he knows another person from his year has fled the village, been brought back, and suddenly, they are on the same team for a yet unclear amount of time, bordering on forever, however long that lasted for them. As such, the water slide that suddenly appeared under his feet brought both relief and confusion, although he would be lying if he said the latter was stronger. Sasuke was fully conscious of the fact that if he didn't stop hitting the tree with all he had, he was either going to break it or break his knuckles. Snap, there went the tree, not that his knuckles were much better. They were bloody and hurt like a bitch. Furthermore, the overall look on his face might have been enough for the Jonin watching him to report him for anger, mental issues and take away his shinobi license forever. But then again, he didn't really care what they thought. Compared to his crappy week, life, they were annoyances at best. Speaking of annoyances, a certain one was on his mind and may or may not be connected to his incredibly bad mood. It wasn't that he didn't deserve her distrust. He did, really, and he knew that if he should he blame anyone, it had to be himself. He was the one who had basically broken her heart and left her unconscious on a fucking bench. Still, the change was unwelcome and made him, though he'd never admit it, uncomfortable. But only slightly. That wasn't the worst of it, though. The fact that he had tried to flee the village but had failed was stirring something unpleasant in his stomach. With the, admittedly, deserved, amount of distrust he was receiving in general, expressed in glares, the occasional hushed insult from a bystander, and the silent way the John and behind him were communicating at all times, was bothering him. For a moment, he thought that if he hadn't failed fleeing, he would have probably not be dealing with this right now. Then, he shook his head. 
he would reap what he had saw and do it without complaining, because, honestly, the Hokage had gone easy on him, and not because of his pretty face. He realized that he owed his team, all of it. He can start redeeming himself by paying for lunch, he supposed. They were meeting that afternoon at Ichiraku's. He dreaded the discussion that would surely follow. He knew the topic of his betrayal would be brought up. However, when he tried to think of an answer to the accusing and questioning stares, he came up with nothing. Oh, well, he was just going to have to go with the flow. Before that, though, he should really bandage his knuckles, so as to prevent Sakura from fussing over him. He doubted she would, now of all times, but the thought made the situation somewhat more bearable. Jiraiya really didn't want to deal with this. He had never personally gotten a hold of what had happened in the forest of death and how Orochimaru had managed to convince Sasuke to join him, but listening to his former teammate happily chatting away everything, he now had a pretty good idea not only of that, but of how bad Uchiha Itachi had messed up his little brother's mind. Honestly, it had to be pretty bad if promises of power like that had been enough to persuade him. Poor kid. Back to the present, he and Orochimaru were just having a friendly, spar when Jiraiya's subordinates showed up. The snake Sanin decided that he had had enough and left, with the promise that Sasuke would join him eventually, leaving his underling Kabuto to fight with them. The medic Nin tried to use one of his special jutsu on Jiraiya, but he had trained with Tsunade, so it didn't work out quite like the young man had hoped, if being thrown into a wall was anything to go by. However, he then started transforming into somebody, something, different. That was when Sasama ran into the room. Sasuke knew he was screwed beforehand, but it was only when he saw Kakashi and Naruto waiting for him at the ramen stall, on time. He started re-evaluating his definition of the word. Sakura is not coming, Kakashi said with no book in sight. Alarm bells were starting to ring in Sasuke's ears. She has training with Tsunade-sama. HN, the last Uchiha replied and froze, thinking that it may not have been the right thing to say. Kakashi just smiled from under his eye. Was it time for saying his prayers yet? Sasuke sat down and told the owner that everything was on him. Naruto, who he would have normally expected to jump up excitedly at the occasion, was silent and wasn't even looking at him. Sasuke was suddenly glad that Sakura wasn't there. The atmosphere was suffocating enough as it was. They didn't talk while eating, and Naruto even ate only two bowls of ramen. A few days ago he seemed fine with Sasuke being back in Konoha, but the attack had served to remind him just what had happened and who they were dealing with. After all, there were many things Naruto could forgive, but hurting Sakura was not part of that list. Even if he had not intended to, Sasuke still felt guilty about that. Over time, he had grown somewhat protective of her, because he perceived her as weak and naive, as too innocent to actually realize that the shinobi world was not a nice place. And so he had done whatever was in his power to protect her, and she had slowly grown on him, fangirling, that had, thankfully, lessened, and all. He hadn't lied when he had called her a precious person of his during the Chunin exam attack. However, when it came to whether she, or Naruto, or Kakashi, even, were more important to him compared to getting power to avenge his dead family. Well, what did you expect from a person who had grown up, had been raised to, love his clan and put it before everything? Of someone who had to go through years of hell in forms of nightmares and constant reminders of how he still wasn't strong enough, how he'd never be. Someone who had been saved by hatred, because it was the only thing he had left when all the people he had loved had died, or betrayed him. Furthermore, the former question was the most confusing in Sasuke's life, and he still didn't know whether he had made the wrong choice by trying to flee, and now, with the new team and new bonds it promised, the question was either going to finally be resolved, or just get more and more confusing. Sasuke knew that the, what if, would haunt him forever. He just hoped that someday he achieved a peace of mind that allowed him to say that it didn't matter either way, and for now, that was killing Itachi. Sasuke's train of thought stopped just as they reached training ground 3. He hadn't even noticed when they'd begun walking. He remembered paying the bill and not much more, that was how deep in thought he had been. Kakashi beamed from behind his mask. Now, then, Naruto. Sasuke sensed the coming punch, but decided that he deserved it, and so he took it without so much as a grunt. Naruto, for his part, seemed to be breathing heavily. Anger was radiating from him. A flash of red danced through Sasuke's mind, but he decided it was not the time for that. Next thing he knew, 
Naruto had already grabbed him by the collar and was rather silently telling him what big of an idiot he was. How he didn't need Orochimaru, of all people, snakes. Whatever the hell he was for power, they were more than enough to help him and how if he ever hurt Sakura that way again he would break his skull and I mean it, Teme. Sasuke was glad that it was over. Naruto being angry and quiet was a phenomenon he didn't want to have to experience again. Then Kakashi opened his mouth. Since you seem so sure that Orochimaru is the only available source of power, I guess I should show you why I was already a Jonin at your age and Enbu only a few years later. Kami have mercy. The next two hours were the most painful and exhausting in Sasuke's entire life. He found himself smirking. Home sweet home. After defeating Arashi the monster, which took exactly one Rasengan, with shadows, bugs and overall inability to move preventing the target from escaping, Jiraiya and his squad met up with the summon and Sasama recognized the girl as one of her clan. The group left and found the clan in a nearby town. After some thanks from the people and promises for visits, they headed back towards Konoha. So, Captain, what did Orochimaru say, if you don't mind me asking? Shikamaru inquired on their second day of traveling. Nothing you should worry about, Jiraiya replied, appreciating the respect he was getting as a superior. Now, if he got a hot bath, a fine woman, some sake and a certain blonde idiot to treat him the same way, life might feel good again. I imagine, Shino drew attention, looking straight ahead, that it had something to do with Sasuke-san. Jiraiya sighed. Yeah, I wonder what sort of person would even consider accepting such an offer. Neji added off-handedly, but no one was fooled. The Hyuga clan and the Uchiha clan had never liked each other much, even the younger generation knew that. But one could say that Naruto's fight with Neji also had some part in the hidden venom in his voice. I wouldn't put the question this way, Jiraiya stated, gathering curious stares. Rather, what sort of thing does a person have to experience to even consider such an offer, even more, act on it? That left everybody in silence. They all knew about the Uchiha massacre, but nobody really knew what exactly had happened that night, beside the murdered himself and Sasuke. They had imagined it had been bad, but just how much? This question left the boys silent for the rest of the trip. Danzo crumpled the report he had received from his subordinate, anger filling him like a never-ending storm. He exited his office in the underground bunker in a brisk pace, quickly getting to the Hokage Tower. His expression scared away most of the younger ninja in his path and made uneasy the rest. He found Homura and Kaharu calmly sipping their tea. Danzo made an effort to compose himself, at least to a certain degree, but the whole thing had gotten under his skin more than it should have. A team? A bloody team, consisting of all the rookie shinobi, and she doesn't even think to consult us? That is beyond insulting, it is downright blasphemous. Kaharu put her teacup down and leveled Danzo a steady gaze. We realize, Danzo, and we already tried to reason with Tsunade, said the decision may be unwise, she is wasting time and potential income from the missions these twelve would otherwise be on, but she will not hear any of it. These genin are a ticking time bomb. It is only a matter of time before they have a serious argument and go at each other. This is what the four-man team system was designed for, it was both the most optimal and economical solution to the situation. She is going to trash her predecessor's legacy if she keeps it up. And what do you propose to do about it? We cannot simply sit around and wait for the bomb to go off. What if she decides to do the same with other teams? This will lead to an even bigger disaster. Homura fixed his glasses on the bridge of his nose and calmly broke what would have been a pointless argument caused by Donzo's aggression. We cannot do anything, for now. Anything official, that is. However, even if we decide to ignore standard procedures, what could we do then? Konoha will not stand with us, Kaharu stated firmly. There was a bit of calamity over the Uchiha's attempted fleeing, but although he still isn't trusted, they will not battle Tsunade on the decision. They like the idea of a bigger team, consisting of all the rookies, for they all showed potential during the Chunin exams. The citizen body will not understand a reason for disobedience, and attempting to convince them would prove to be futile. And the village is already unstable as it is, trying a revolt will not work out well. No, we must seek other options. Danzo? The latter's thoughtful facade dropped as he looked at his companions. An idea had formed itself in his head. It was risky, but then again, wasn't the whole partnership that way? Tsunade will bring Konoha down, 
Danzo stated slowly, in a calm voice. We all know that Hiruzen's methods will not work in the long run. The way I see it, it may be best to be allied with our enemies, and weed out our insusceptive to reason allies. What are you implying? questioned Homura with a serious face. I believe it is time I told you about my correspondence with Orochimaru. Well, congratulations, then, said Tsunade after hearing the report from Jiraiya about his and the Konoha 12's mission. They didn't know what those congratulations were for, though, it wasn't like they had managed to stop Orochimaru or Kabuto or anything, nor did they find something about the Snake Sanin's future plans. The only things they achieved were saving Sasama's clan, destroying the hideout, which was basically abandoned, and getting out alive. The last one in itself was an accomplishment, though. But we didn't do that much of a thing, muttered Tenton, but everyone heard her and the rest of the twelve silently agreed. I wouldn't call saving a clan nothing, Tenton, the goddam contradicted. True, you didn't take out a Sanin or his year-long apprentice, but then again, no one expected you to. This mission could be referred to as AS rank. You snuck into an enemy's hideout, learned his purposes for attacking a comrade and judged that said enemy is plotting something. You pretty much went on the mission to find out just that. This is what matters. The group of Jenin and Chunin were surprised at the Hokage's words. Really, what were they thinking? No one could have seriously expected them to take out Asani even if they did have one on their side. Their spirits lifted up and the tension in the room dissolved. Now that that's over, on the topic of your training, Tsunade started, gaining their attention again. The night of your sleep over at the Uchiha mansion, I and your senseis decided on what you could improve, what you should start training, how we could help you and how you could help each other. She smiled at their again surprised expressions, tonight. All of them are returning from a mission and they are leaving for another in two days. Today rest and meet them tomorrow at 10 o'clock on training ground 27 and we will explain everything, understood? Hi, Hokage-sama, the twelve replied and went home to prepare for the next day. May I leave, Tsunadeheim? asked Jiraiya and his old teammate turned her attention towards him. No, Jiraiya, there is something I need to discuss with you, she stated. Is it about Naruto's training? Because if it is, you should know that soon I'll be leaving the village to do a research on Akatsuki, he warned. It's not just just about Naruto's training. It's also about something else, the Hokage replied. About what? I want you to tell him who his parents were, about his clan and I want you to teach him in Tenten Fuenjutsu. The twelve met their respective senseis the next day at the precise time and place. They greeted each other. Tsunade and Jiraiya were watching from behind a tree and some bushes. So, we must first teach you some basic lessons for a shinobi, Asuma started. What, like taijutsu, genjutsu, ninjutsu? Sakura asked. No, not this time, Sakura, Kakashi replied. If you want to know what they are, first start fighting us. What, why? demanded Kiba, Akamaru barking on his head as if in agreement. Just do it, you'll see, said Kuranai. The twelve threw looks at each other and waited for one of them to start. Eventually, Naruto, as impatient as ever, threw a kanai at Asuma, who, instead of dodging or blocking it, caught it and sent it flying back at the blonde, who blocked it. Lesson number one, the Jonin sensei of Team 10 started, weapons and ammo. Remember that in battle, you could and have to use everything you can in order to win. If an enemy throws a kanai or shuriken or he loses another weapon, use it against him. The more weapons you have, the better, right, Tenten? Said girl nodded, as for ammo, such can be used in different types of weapons. For instance, Shizun, Hokage-sama's assistant, has a weapon, which sends senbon needles. In this case, the needles are the ammo and are for more than one time use. However, if you manage to collect them, her weapon would be useless. Yes, but what if she replicates them? Naruto asked. Naruto, first, I don't think there is a jutsu that can replicate senbons, Kakashi told his student, and even if there was, usually when people use weapons with ammo, their attacks are long-ranged and usually they are weak at shorter ranges or don't have enough chakra. Not everyone has as much as you. In this case, we have Shizun, who is a medical ninja and they usually don't have that much chakra, because they need advanced control. The blonde nodded. Lesson number two, announced Kuranai as she started the hand signs for a genjutsu, stealth, and she disappeared. Sasuke activated his sharingan, but couldn't find her. He looked around and cursed. 
he remembered that the bloodline limit could only see if a person was under a genjutsu and they most certainly were. He saw that Neji and Hinata had activated their Byakugan, but looked just as confused as the rest. Sakura, being the one good with genjutsu, tried to dispel in, but to no avail. Do you know what makes a shinobi a shinobi? Kurinai's voice asked out of seemingly everywhere. It's not the chakra manipulation. With hard work, even a civilian can achieve that. It's two things and one of them is stealth. The ability to use the element of surprise, to get to places and learn secrets without being caught. Or, as some use it, to murder silently. Suddenly, Guy appeared behind Shikamaru and aimed a kick towards his head. The latter barely managed to avoid it, but didn't see the one, coming at his chest. It sent him flying over to Ino, who caught him. Lesson number three, the, youthful, adult started, for once completely serious, deception. It is the other thing, besides stealth, that makes a shinobi a shinibi. The ability to deceive your enemy, to lure them into thinking they're safe, when they aren't or to give them a false sense of alarm. The ability to mask your true intentions. The four John and appeared next to each other and started attacking the students. Kurinai trapped them in another genjutsu, but team 8 were quite familiar with her techniques. They managed to warn the others whenever they sensed danger, but it was still hard. In the end, Naruto and Kiba started attacking each other, thinking they were enemies and Hinata and Shino were trying to stop them. In the meantime, Asuma fought off the others, who were trying to near Kurinai and Kakashi was using Futon against Lee, who had so far successfully dodged every attempt. Sasuke saw this and remembered how his father once told him that Kaden was stronger than Futon. He decided to help the green-clad ninja and started countering Kakashi's attacks with his own. That helped Lee, who started being in offense and tried to land a hit. So far, unsuccessfully, but Kakashi was the second fastest Jonin after Guy. Guy himself aimed a punch at Choji, who, albeit not all that fast, had learned his lesson and managed to dodge. Seeing that, Kakashi shunchen Ed and left Lee to land a kick at a tree. The copy nin appeared behind Choji and put a kanai at his throat. Kurinai dispelled her genjutsu and gathered with Asuma and Guy around Kakashi. That brought everyone else's attention towards the small group and their eyes widened, seeing the kanai at Choji's neck. Lesson number 4, Kakashi started, comradeship. The one thing that brought Konoha most of its glory. I see that, even though you are still getting to know each other, you are already developing strong relationships. In the end, those who abandon the mission are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. Remember that. So, what do you do in this situation? Suddenly, Kakashi's one eye widened and he barely managed to evade Naruto's punch from beneath. He had hid behind the others, performed the cage bunch and no jutsu and had attacked from the ground. Since he had aimed at his sensei's jaw, which was next to Choji's head, the Jonin had no other choice but to jump back and let the Akamichi go. Thanks, Naruto, said the saved boy. No problem, Choji, the blonde replied and both of them stepped back towards the rest of the twelve. The Jonin stood there for a moment, before slowly cracking smiles. You did quite well, Kurinai complimented. Yes, the flames of youth burn brightly within you all. Guy shouted, Guy sensei. Lee shouted back, Lee, Guy sen. Okay, that's enough, Tsunade interrupted what would have been another sunset hug coming from behind the tree with Jiraiya. I must admit, Bratz, you did well. Now, we can discuss your training. All of the Genin and the Chunin were now listening. They wanted to learn, alright. They also knew they had to take their training seriously. Orochimaru was going to be back, that much was for sure, but also, because they were a special team. To be formed, the Hokage must have had great expectations and none were willing to fail. As I said yesterday, the program will be based on learning not only from your John and senseis, but also from your teammates. Every single one of you has an area in which they exceed and could help the others exceed too. It is not guaranteed that you would be as good as said person in the area, that, most likely, won't happen, but the person will help you to improve. Then, the only thing that will help you is experience. Now, I will announce what I and the other senseis think each one of you should train excessively and what they could improve on. Remember, you can't be good at everything. If you remain weak in one area, you must know that that is what teammates are for, to cover for each other's weaknesses. Quote, they all nodded. Good, now we begin. First off, Abarame Shino. 
As far as we know, you exceed in your clan's ninjutsu, but your taijutsu is pretty average. Do you know what your chakra affinity is? He shook his head. Wait, what do you mean by chakra affinity? asked Naruto. Based on what ninjutsu the shinobi uses, the amount of chakra will be different, as would the element the ninja employs. The five main elemental types are also the names for the five great shinobi nations, fire, wind, lightning, earth and water. Each ninja has the potential to better utilize one of these styles and maybe more. The one you best utilize is your elemental affinity. To discover what it is, you need chakra paper, the goddam explained, pulling out a package of said paper from inside her clothes. If you want to know what your affinity is, just take a piece of paper and channel chakra through it. Depending on the way the paper reacts the affinity differs. Shino, would you like to know what yours is? I would, Hokage-sama, although I'm afraid I won't be needing the information. The insects in my body feed on chakra, so I cannot really do anything about it. I just want to satisfy my curiosity, Shino replied. Once again, the others didn't know what to make out of his honesty. Sure, it was good that he was opening up, but it was still strange. Tsunade gave him a piece of paper and waited as he channeled chakra. The paper ignited and burned to ashes. You have an affinity for fire, which is the most common one in our country, the fifth explained, very well, Shino, but you can't just survive on your clan's ninjutsu. You should improve your taijutsu and learn to wield some kind of weapon. Tenten, could you teach him? It sounded more like a demand than a request. Sure, the brown-haired girl replied. She had always been proud about her ability to wield weapons, but she supposed that it was time to share some of her knowledge with the others. After all, none of them seemed interested in exceeding in it and they were going to help her too. Thank you, Shino. Any objections? No, Hokage-sama. Good. Moving on, Akamichi Choji. You two seem to be doing fairly well in your clan's techniques, but your taijutsu needs a lot of work. Do you know your affinity? No, Godem sama but I would like to. Tsunade handed him a piece of paper. As he put his chakra in it, it turned to dirt. Earth type, she seemed surprised and fairly amused. It is the most common one in Iwa. Would you like to learn ninjutsu with it? Yes, Hokage-sama. Then it is decided. You should train your clan's techniques separately at home and use them in a spar against the others. While learning Doden ninjutsu and improving your taijutsu. Alright, Hokage-sama. Then, we shall continue. Haruno Sakura, as my apprentice I will teach you medical ninjutsu and taijutsu, although you should polish your basics in the first and, if possible, advance further. I would also recommend learning genjutsu due to your advanced chakra control. Although medical ninjutsu sometimes takes up a lot of chakra, if you learn a not so draining genjutsu then it may be of help. I will also give you my summoning contract in time. Would you like to know more about your chakra affinity? No, Hokage-sama. I think that the above would be enough for me. Also, thank you, Sakura replied. Very well, then. Next up, Hayuga Hinata. To be honest, you were never that good in your clan's techniques, although I'm pleasantly surprised to learn from Kurenai that you have improved. Do you know why? Well, Hokage, Sama, now that I think about it, it may be because my chakra nature is different. Most P people in the clan are earth types and if I'm a different one, it could be the cause of my problems. Let's test your theory out, then, Tsunade said while handing her a piece of chakra paper. Hinata took it and it became damp. You are correct, Hinata, you are water-natured. I think there hasn't been anyone in the clan before, except maybe your mother, who has had this affinity. I think she had some notes, for future generations, as she put it. I'll search for them and if I do find them, I'll tell you right away. Anyway, train the same way you did before, it seems to be working for you. Except that, Train your regular taijutsu and sweeten ninjutsu. You could very well be the only one in this group with this affinity and you might need it in battle. Hi, Hokage-sama. Next, Hayuga Neji. I don't really have that much to say to you. You're a prodigy, after all. Continue with the Hayuga clan techniques, which I suppose you will use your chakra with, and taijutsu. Also, I want you two to learn how to wield a weapon and adapt it to your fighting style. It may come in handy. Any objections? No, Godem sama Okay then. Next, Inazuka Kiba. You have your clan's jutsus and you are pretty good at them, I suppose. I think a weapon could be good for you too. You have developed fast reflexes over the years of training in your clan's fighting style and it could be really useful. 
Do you want to learn element ninjutsu as well? Yes, he nodded enthusiastically. Tsunade handed him a paper and it ignited and turned to ashes after he channeled chakra through it. Another fire type, the fifth remarked, since this is common only Konoha Nen and not that much in other countries, it could be an advantage. Any protests? No, Hokage-sama. Then it is Nara Shikamaru's turn. You have your clan's ninjutsu and have the potential of a great strategist. Do whatever you can to train your mind. Do you know your elemental affinity? No, Hokage-sama, he said and got a paper. He put chakra and it turned to dust. Another earth type. I would suggest you learn ninjutsu with it, seeing as taijutsu and wielding a weapon are far too much troublesome. Yes, Godem sama Now, next in line is Rock Lee. Lee, we all know that you can't use your chakra and I'm sure that your advanced taijutsu skills will be pretty useful, but this is where I'm giving you a harder task. I want you to learn how to wield at least three weapons by choice. Tenten, I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you to take over the training of those who have to use weapons. How many can you wield? Excluding Kanai and Shuriken, I can fight pretty well with a bow staff, Tanto, Katana, Nunchaku and Kusari Kama. At others I'm pretty average, but I know how to fight decent enough with over 10 weapons, the girl stated. All of the others, beside Team Guy, looked odd. Lee and Guy smiled brightly while Neji smirked. Tenten was not one to underestimate during battle even with the whole Tamari fight during the Chunin exams. After that, she had trained even harder and improved her wielding at several weapons and scroll usage. I hope that it won't be a problem then? The goddam asked, looking at the girl with new eyes. No, not at all, Hokage-sama. Very well then. Moving on, Tenten, you already summaried your abilities with weapons, but how about those with sealing? I know only the seals that I use for my scrolls and they are storage ones. Otherwise, I don't know anything really combat suited. Continue to improve your current wielding abilities and taijutsu. I will tell you later what to do about your sealing abilities, though. Next, Uchiha Sasuke. You can fight with Kaden ninjutsu and are quite proficient in taijutsu. I suggest you focus on them, plus wielding a weapon. Anything else? Hokage-sama, I don't think fire is my affinity, though. Could I try out the chakra paper? The Uchiha replied. The goddam gave him one, curious. He channeled chakra through it and it crumbled. Lightning affinity, then, the fifth said. Impressed, that is the main affinity of Kumo Nen. Very rare in other countries. I suppose that Kakashi could help you there. The copy Nen nodded. Well, anything else? No, Hokage-sama. Now, Uzumaki Naruto. She made a pause. Naruto, do you know who your parents are? No, he said, looking confused. Shikamaru sighed. This is so troublesome. And obvious, your father is the Yandaimi, Namikaze Minato. I don't know how anyone didn't notice earlier. You look exactly like him, except for the face shape. There was a stunned silence at the Nara's words. Naruto was gapping, then he looked down at the ground and started playing with a pebble. The others glanced at him, worried. Why wasn't he excited? Good, he said and looked up, wearing his trademark grin. Then I suppose I could put my goal in another way. I will surpass my father and become a greater Hokage than him, believe it. Everyone smiled at his antics. And what about my mother, then? The Yandaimi's son asked. Oh, that one is pretty obvious too, Shikamaru lazily said. Her name was Kashina Uzumaki. Wait, wait, as in from the Uzumaki clan? Tenten was bouncing excitedly. What do you mean? Ino questioned. The clan came from Uzu Shiogakure in the Whirlpool country. They were distant relatives of the Senju and therefore had great relationships with Konoha. The Uzumakis were famous for their longevity and as the best seal masters in the whole shinobi world. Tenten turned to Naruto. The fourth Hokage was also pretty good with Fuenjutsu. Naruto, it must be in your blood, she bounced again. The weapon mistress then stopped and frowned when realization dawned her. So that is how the Kiyubi reached Konoha. With their seals, chakra chains and long lives, the Uzumakis are perfect for being Jinchuriki and I bet that your mother was the one before you. Tsunade and Jiraiya shared a look. The Genin and Chunin knew far too much about the night Naruto was born for their own good. Excellent deduction, Tenten, right? Said girl nodded at the frog hermit's question. In this case, I would like to take you and Naruto as my apprentices in Fuenjutsu. I am currently the only seal master in Konoha, anyway. Sadly, I must soon leave you, because I'll have a mission next week. 
Until then, Tenton, I'll give you the task to teach Naruto the basics and, once he's caught up, I'll give you a few scrolls with seals of variating levels of difficulty for you to learn until I come back. Do you accept? The two genin shared a look, then grinned, hi. Okay then, Tsunade interrupted, moving on. Naruto, you are Jiraiya's apprentice. you will study Fuenjutsu, Taijutsu and I suppose that you don't know what your affinity is, she handed him a piece of paper. The boy put chakra into it and it sliced perfectly in half. Wind nature, then, the fifth said, this is the common affinity in Suna. You have people with all five elemental affinities in the group. With proper training in teamwork and ninjutsu, you won't have to worry about those kinds of battles. Asuma, wind was your affinity, right? The Jonin nodded, I will see to the boy's education in ninjutsu. Very well, then. Last, but not least, Yamanaka Ino. You have your clan's ninjutsu, but aren't proficient in taijutsu. Do you know your affinity? No, Hokage-sama. Here you go, she handed the girl a paper. Ino Chanel chakra and it turned to dust. Another earth type, then. Would you like to learn justice with it? No, Hokage-sama, but I have another suggestion. Since I heard the story of how Sakura's team went to the wave country, I was wondering if I too could use Senban needles to, with proper medical education, strike vital points. Even if I don't kill the enemy, it might be enough for me to take control over their body. Plus, if I learn how to apply poisons, it can be even more deadly. My clan has a few scrolls about herbs. That is an interesting request, Ino. I think that Shizun wouldn't mind to teach you how to fight with needles as well as the vital points in one's body. As for the poisons, I think that Shikamaru's father would gladly help, right? Tsunade turned towards the lazy Chunin. He wouldn't mind, I suppose, the Nara shrugged. Okay then, now we are finished. But that isn't all, I'm afraid. The four lessons you learned and some other will be applied in your training as well. Your Jonin senseis have noticed proficiency in those skills in some among this group. Therefore, every week, beside individual training and missions, you will have lessons from your new teammates on one of these subjects. I will try to keep the missions as short as possible, but don't count on it. I want you to use your spare moments for training and resting, nothing more. The subjects are weapons which will be lead by tenton the reason some of you were assigned to learn this is because they have to master a weapon for the rest they just need to work well enough with at least one weapon the second one is stealth which will be lead by naruto for understandable reasons i press him a the blonde smiled sheepishly and rubbed the back of his head there almost wasn't a person in the village that wasn't pranked by him over the years his stealth had increased and since it was vital for a shinobi it was an important subject as well. A downfall was that he didn't use it in battle, though. The third subject will be deception, led by Aburame Shino. I want you to teach the others how to mask their emotions or how to lead the enemy to believe something else. Neji will assist you by teaching them how to read expressions and gestures. The fourth subject will be chakra control and manipulation, led by Sakura. She has near perfect control and it will help you greatly in not only in ninjutsu, but in stealth and deception as well. There are shinobi who are able to tell where one is or how he feels, whether he lies or not by sensing chakra. Ino, Asuma said that you have similar abilities, but in a lot more earlier stage. I want you to develop them with Sakura's help. The fifth subject will be strategy, led by Shikamaru. Don't you dare say you won't do it because it is too troublesome, Nara, or else. The goddam sent a warning glance at the boy, who nervously nodded. No one wanted to be on the receiving end of the slug princess's warth. There will also be a sixth subject, named Taijutsu. I've noticed that there is a major lack of skills in this particular area. You don't have to be proficient in it, just to bring it to a decent level. Lee, please, take this one over, but don't overwork them if they do not wish. For other things like setting up traps, tracking, First aid and such your Jonin senseis will aid you. Now, I realize that some of you will have a lack of skill in these subjects. You don't have to be perfect. Remember, a team is created because you have to cover the comrade's weaknesses and they to cover yours. So aid your comrade and you will be aided as well. With that, you are dismissed. Tomorrow, you will start your first lesson on chakra control and a new regimen of training. Rest, because it will be a long day, Tsunade finished her speech. Hi, all the genin replied and went home. And you, she turned to the janin, rest for your mission. It will be in a rank, after all. Yes, 
Hokage-sama, and with that, they vanished. Do you believe in them? Jiraiya asked. The goddam smiled, of course. After all, I wouldn't place a bet for the life of me on them. Except if Naruto does, that kid sure has a knack for gambling. Jiraiya remembered how the blonde won from a scratch from one of those street lotteries, yes, he does. I hope you aren't planning anything to do about it. Tsunade smiled like an angel, no, of course not. The frog hermit just sighed. The Kona had 12 assembled on the next day at around 10 o'clock on training ground 27. It was Monday, the start of a new and important week in their lives. Their first training session as a team. Sakura had done a research the day before the meeting and had a good idea of what to do. She looked at the group and decided to start with basic questions. However, she noticed that Lee had sat down away from the rest. He didn't really need those lessons, but had resolved to come, just to be there. All right, I suppose you all know what chakra is in basic control, meaning molding it. Have you done any exercises for control? S. Sakura-san, we've already de done the tree walking E exercise with Kurinai sensei replied Hinata. She really hated the fact that she stuttered so much, but knew that it had to do with her lack of confidence, although it had increased after the Chunin exams. She thought that those lessons and interaction with the others could do something about it, that she could show them just how much she had improved. We've already mastered that, too, remarked Shikamaru. And we're already past the water walking one, remembered Tenten. So, Team 8 and Team 10 haven't mastered water walking. We too have mastered it, so I want you six to follow me. The others wait here, I have an exercise ready for you, instructed Sakura and lead the two teams towards a small river near the bridge where Team 7's meetings were usually held. Sakura explained how to do the exercise and told them to be careful in the beginning and not go too much into the water. She told them to come back once they mastered it. The pink cat returned to the others and took a deep breath. Tsunade-sama said that we should train by helping each other out. I have an idea how you could train your chakra control using weapons. For now, only Tenten will be able to do it effectively since she is the only one who could wield a weapon well enough, but I think that in time, most of us could learn how to do it. We could EMB chakra in weapons, but they have to be made by special metal, like Asuma Sensei's knuckle knives. I found out that, although rare and on the slightly pricey side, this metal is definitely worth it and there are a few people in Konoha who could actually craft with it. Tenten, your father is one of them, but before you start making offers from his name, I'm pretty sure that none of us would want your father to work for less money than he deserves. Together, we could save money from missions and whoever wants to could buy a weapon of choice, made by this metal. First, he'll need to master it. What do you think? It's a good idea, Sakura-chan, Naruto said and the others nodded. Even Lee had come to join the conversation once he heard about the weapon's part. After hearing what it was about, though, he sadly tilted his head down. Lee, I wanted to ask you something. The green-clad ninja surprisingly raised his head. Can you also tree and water walk? Yes, yes I can, Sakura-san, he replied. Please, you don't need to add the suffix. Anyway, yesterday I researched your problem. Since you can mold chakra, I think that your inability to do ninjutsu and genjutsu is something else. Ninjutsu is composed of one of the following, nature transformation and shape transformation. Very few shinobi can use both. In fact, Sasuke and Kakashi Sensei's Chidori uses both. Nature transformation is actually an advanced form of chakra control. It requires both molding and defining chakra into an innate type of chakra nature, altering its properties and characteristics. Shape transformation is also an advanced form of chakra control. It consists of manipulating chakra's physical characteristics, form, size, etc. However, this chakra metal does not require direct nature transformation, nor shape transformation. It requires the so-called chakra flow. You literally just need enough chakra control to flow your chakra through the metal. You don't have to manipulate it, you just channel chakra and it could gain the properties of the chakra nature. For example, wind-natured chakra can make it extremely thin and sharp, while fire, engulf it in flames and thus incinerating everything in its path. Lee, what I'm trying to say is that there is a way to apply chakra in your fighting style. Taijutsu will remain your first and foremost weapon, but if you do master three weapons and learn how to channel chakra through them. Sakura's voice faltered and took a look at the taijutsu user. Lee was staring at her. 
Since the day he found out that he couldn't use ninjutsu or genjutsu like the other kids, he had become the laughing stock of the academy. After he had miraculously graduated and was placed on Teen Guy, he had started training non-stop with his sensei. So what if he could not use ninjutsu or genjutsu, he asked himself. He was going to become an extremely powerful shinobi regardless. When they had learned the tree and water walking exercises, he didn't know what to think. Sure, he knew that he had chakra, every living thing had, and that he could mold it, but his condition wasn't furthermore explained and so he didn't know whether or not he could control it. Later that day, after his teammates and John and instructor had gone home, he had tried to do a simple henge. After yet another failed attempt, he didn't know whether to feel relief that his countless hours of training hadn't gone to vain or to scold at himself because of the former. Of course his hard work mattered. He hadn't only learned taijutsu with Gai Sensei, he had also learned how to embrace the power of youth. Still, he had been excited when his idol had started teaching him on how to open the chakra gates, even if he wouldn't use them often. Because, even though he wouldn't admit it, Rock Lee had always wondered what it would be like to use chakra in his fighting style constantly, without much side effects besides exhaustion. And now, an opportunity awaited him. He just needed to work a little harder. He started crying from happiness and spontaneously hugged Sakura, shouting, Thank you, Sakura S.A., I mean, Sakura. May you, youthful cherry blossom, remain this youthful for the rest of your life. Sakura was touched. She was getting accustomed to Lee's unusual antics and knew just how much this probably meant to him, for he was using youth only two times in one sentence. It usually reached beyond four. She hugged him back and when he let go, he whipped his tears away and smiled widely. Okay, then, the teacher clasped her hands together. Naruto, do you know about the cage Bunshin no Jutsu special side effect? The blonde shook his head. The effect is that all the memories and knowledge, gathered by the clone, return back to the user. You probably haven't noticed, since you use it only for battle, but it is usually used for stealth missions and information gathering. Imagine it this way, you are training a technique which will take you one week to master. If you create one shadow clone, you will be done in half the time, because you are doing it twice as fast. If you create two clones you will be able to master it in one third of the original time since there would be three of you doing it. Naruto had a thoughtful expression on his face. Sakura gave him a little time to think, she knew that he wasn't good with theory. Slowly, his expression changed into one of realization and he looked at her again. Okay, so basically if I create shadow clones, my training will go smoother. Yes, the pinkhead replied, relieved that he had gotten the concept of it. Now all that he needed was to apply it. However, remember that you divide your chakra equally amongst the clones and that their exhaustion will also come back to you once they've dispelled, Sakura stated, Now, I know that you probably have the largest reserves in the group, so you are the one that has most troubles with chakra control. Even if you have mastered the Rasengan, you still have to do it with a clone. I want you to master a different technique, one that requires smaller reserves and thus greater control. Make four clones, please. Naruto did his signature jutsu and the five blondes waited for further instructions. Now, Naruto, what I want you to train is. Dot the Bunshin no jutsu. The number one surprising ninja visibly paled. It had been that one technique that he had failed at doing in the academy every single time. It wasn't even a ninjutsu, but a low-class genjutsu. If he didn't die after that, he was so going to get Aruka to treat him to ramen. Naruto wordlessly went away from the others and started training the technique. He remembered the hand seals all too well, he had had enough nightmares with them. The clones did the same. Okay, as for the rest of you, Sakura looked at Lee, Tenten, Neji and Sasuke, you, Sasuke, will be doing basic nature transformation for lightning types. The pinkhead took out two pieces of fabric, which Sasuke recognized as wool, and a pair of gloves. He raised his eyebrows at her. Don't look at me like that. Even though you've already mastered the Chidori, which is both nature and shape transformation, you still have to go through the basics to be able to perform other jutsus. I don't know if Kakashi told you this, but lightning type chakra could cut through objects, like the wind one, but there is an additional numbness to it. The key is to increase the high frequency vibrations of your chakra. If you master this and apply it to a weapon, you could paralyze the target and finish it off easily. Got it? HN, 
Good, now go and train. You will try to cut through one of these pieces, because it channels electricity. That way, you will know whether or not you could achieve the side effect, numbness. Once you could slice through it, try it with the rubber gloves on and the other cloth, increasing the vibrations. The last two Chiha went without another word. Now, you three, what I said earlier is true. A special metal is required to use the chakra flow to its full potential. However, you could use it with normal kanai and shuriken, it just isn't as effective. Here, she handed them chakra paper, let's see what your natures are. It turned out that Tenten and Lee were fire-natured, while Neji, earth-natured. Okay then, Tenten, Lee, you know what your nature does. Neji, earth-type can increase a weapon's defensive power and reinforces the inherent properties of the material involved. In other words, it could make your weapon harder. I think that if you manage to use the advanced form, few things would be able to not break under your weapon. I want you three to channel chakra through your kanai and shuriken, with Tenten trying with other parts of her arsenal. Tenten, Lee, when you flow chakra though your weapons and try to destroy tree branches. Start with thin ones and proceed with thicker ones. Be careful and do it near the river, in case you start a fire. Neji, I want you to flow chakra through one of your oldest and most uncherished kanai and try to make a dent in it with another one that you don't use. Once you can't make a dent in the one with chakra, but rather with the one without chakra, I want you to show me both kanai and tell me through which one you chanelled chakra, finished Sakura. The members of Team Guy nodded and went to do their tasks. The Pinkette decided to check on Team 8 and Team 10. She found them at the river bank, the girls talking, Hinata was red, so the topic was obviously Naruto, and Shino staying a little bit away from them. Shikamaru, Choji and Kiba were still trying to stay on the surface of the water. They had made progress, but were still having some difficulties. Shikamaru was even grumpier than usual, repeating, troublesome, every five seconds like a mantra or something. Kiba was trying to get Akamaru to try, after all, he couldn't just leave his ninkin on the shore during a mission. And Choji looked saddened, because his usual bag of chips had gotten soaked. Sakura instructed the ones that had finished the exercise to help the others and she herself helped. After another 15 minutes everyone knew how to water walk and headed towards the others. The first one they spotted was Naruto. He did look like he was making progress, there were two bunchen, although they looked sickly. Sakura told him to dissolve all the clones and then work with the newly gained knowledge. He did so and made new ones. Then, he managed to do two successful bunchen. Sakura told him to try and make one and then he would be finished for the day. Next, they went to Sasuke. He had managed to cut the first cloth, but was having trouble with the second. The pink had explained that it was because of the glove. He had to first channel chakra through it and then into the fabric, so it was basically another layer. She then took out a third cloth for Hinata and told her how she was supposed to make it damp, using chakra, kind of like a preparation for future sweeten techniques. Sadly, water chakra couldn't be applied efficiently to weapons, because it would make them rusty. The Hyuga heiress wasn't planning on becoming proficient in that area anyway. However, the pink head explained that it could be used to sabotage the enemy's arsenal. Sakura also gave Kiba a leaf and told him to try and incinerate it, explaining how. He went right to do his task. Choji got the same assignment as Neji, but he was to make a piece of wood harder. Sakura told him to show her that piece later. She turned to the others, Ino, Shikamaru and Shino. Sakura said that they are to train their reserves and that she was also going to train with them. Shino, Ino and the Pinkhead all had completed the chakra exercises fairly easy, which showed small reserves. Or, in Shino's case, great control. As for Shikamaru, if he had had bigger ones during the Chunin exams, he would have won his match. Not that he wasn't promoted anyway, but if it were a real battle, he would have lost his life. So, the four of them had to continuously climb trees until they felt too exhausted to do so. In the end of the day, everyone were exhausted, but glad. Neji had managed to make a small dent in his second kanai, Naruto, successful one bunchen. Hinata had dampened the cloth, Kiba had burned half of his leaf and Sasuke had made a cut into the second cloth. Lee and Tenten had successfully incinerated some small branches and even one or two with middle thickness and Choji had presented a harder piece of wood. As for the other four, the results of their training were going to be made clear after time. 
Sakura congratulated everyone and told them to continue their training, M-A-K-N-G it harder. After that, they parted ways and decided to meet the next day for their first training in Deception. That's all for now if you enjoy then please like share and do comments.